Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Bargain Bid, a show about speedrunning games all under $20. I'm your host, Midnight Vesper, and if you're new here, well, here's how this works. For more current slash digital games, we'll be using digital stores like Steam, GOG, Itch.io, Ubisoft, etc. to look at the list slash MSRP price. For retro games, we'll be using a wide assortment of price trading websites, looking mostly at the loose price of the game. We do not count any sales or discounts as they vary from time of purchase. Do not forget that Frame Fatales is GDQ's all-women online speedrunning community. The upcoming event, Flame Fatales, will run from August 13th to the 20th. The schedule will be released on July 6th, just a couple days away. Head on over to gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales for more information. And do not forget, uh, actually, do not forget uh, here on the bargain bin, we have an amazing show lined up. We got not one, but two Fallout games coming for you. We're going to have Fallout 4 later on. But first, let's go ahead and send things over to our runner, El Elongated Musket Gun, with their run of Fallout 3. How are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? I'm all right. Well, this is going to be Fallout 3 All Quests. Uh, this is a category that completes all 30 quests in the base game using any glitches necessary, and there's some really cool ones in this run. My commentator today is going to be Snowcone Joey, so I'll allow him to introduce himself. Hey everybody, my name is Joey. I'm a Fallout 4 speedrunner, friend of Elon, and I'm excited to see this run today. Alright, with that uh, being also, said... Oh, real sorry. Quick, uh, is your, is your uh, game available? My, my game is right here. Uh, on Discord. Oh, sorry, my bad. I just now noticed that, sorry. Oh, you're good. Let me just share that real quick. There you go. Fallout 3 is now available. Well, All right. with that being said, we can get into the run. All right, so countdown was going to be in 3, 2, 1, go. All right, so in Fallout 3 All Quests, we're going to be doing all the quests, as the category's name is. Uh, so that includes doing all of the vault normally, uh, instead of doing the any percent version where we clip out of the vault early and just go off and complete the game super fast. So we also have to change our stats to be necessary to complete all the runs. Oops. So our stats there are going to be four on the strength. Um, one for agility, 10 for endurance, 10 for charisma, keep intelligence the same, and then uh, nine on luck. And the whole point of these stats is so that we can then have decent l uh, luck with changing up, decent luck with getting uh, successful speech attempts happening. And then also we're gonna need some perks related to lock picking and repair later on for certain quests. How long have you been running this game, Elon? Been running this game for about three years. So, been doing this stuff for a while. So if you're wondering, I'm, I should have given this earlier, but there is going to be an epilepsy warning. I'm going to be do doing what's called quick save, quick load quick clipping, in which I have quick save and quick load bound to my mouse. And while I'm doing that, it's going to just like send me through physical objects because the game loads in your character before it loads in the collision around it. So that's how I was able to just clip through the door in the vault sequence, and I was also able to skip lines of dialogue with it. So we're just going to go through the vault normally, you know, go through our birthday party that we totally skip because we're speedrunners, <laughs> and we are scared of social interaction. <laughs> and also, it just makes everything go faster. This is a big part of the run, quick save, quick load clipping. So you're going to see it a lot. Why do you have to complete the birthday party as normal in this run versus any percent? So we're completing the entirety of the vault because there are actually quests related to your vault, to like getting out of the vault. If we clip out of the vault early, we don't complete some of those quests and we can't do level up features. And if we can't level up, then we can't do certain quests like in a fast manner. Well, you made it. So here I'm just going to take lockpicks, explosives, and speech. We're going to need the explosive skills really soon because we need to disarm the bomb in the Megaton. Uh, it'd be kind of funny to like blow it up, but it's really slow as well. So we're going to just disarm the bomb, and we're also going to talk to Moira Brown when we're in Megaton. So here in the escape sequence, we're going to talk to Mata, just get through it. 
and I'm gonna do something here where I'm gonna pull out my fists. This, if you're actually com if you're committing a uh, a fighting action, NPCs can't talk to you. So I intentionally pull up my fist and start uh, start uh, hitting or just hitting the air in order so that Butch doesn't try to talk to us. It just saves a little bit of time trying to avoid interactions. Here we're just going to clip out and exit the vault. And before I clip out, I'm going to make a full save. This is in case on the rare chance that the uh, that uh, the vendor that we're going to meet outside of Megaton does not have a missile launcher. So another quick glitch is going to happen. It's called the Speed Cripple. And I'll get into a further explanation on Speed Cripple once I get past once I get past this uh, level up screen. So we're going to take Speech as we need to crush Mora's hopes and dreams, and we're going to take Little Leaguer as so we have enough explosive skills so that we can disarm the bomb. So Speed Cripple is a glitch where you make a quick save, break your legs, and on the on, on a six frame window while breaking your legs, you reload that quick save. And by reloading the quick save, you allow um, the game to get really confused. It's supposed to be taking away movement speed from you, but all of a sudden you have your full movement speed back, and the game gets a little bit confused and adds your cripple speed onto your base speed. Enjoy my selection. Oh no! There's multiple ways to do this, right? Yes, there are multiple ways. So we got bad luck. I'm gonna have to reload the game real quick. He did not spawn with a uh, with a missile launcher. If he does not spawn with the missile launcher, it's okay. We just have to reload the game real quick, and then we have to go through this little segment. It is a rare chance it can happen, but it can happen. And you have to stream on Discord again. Uh, fellas, oh, I'll add that real quick. Pleasure to offer hot death and um, a variety of exciting flavors. Sorry about this technical di difficulties. It happens. Share my screen real quick. Or back. Sorry about that. So here we're going to perform a glitch called Ghost Duping, where we're going to actually sell back uh, the vendor's items in a weird way so that we can just buy the missile launcher. So I'm going to find my 10 millimeter pistol and my missile launcher, make a quick save right here, as we're going to need to get Speed Cripple back later. And so this is the glitch I'm talking about. So you see how I'm now moving at 160% movement speed? That is the reason why. Well, I'll be damned. You're from First order of business in Megaton is to get uh, is to disarm the bomb. We disarm it successfully. You really shouldn't fail it if you have your explosive skills high enough. And then we're going to go talk to Moira Brown. Normally, she wants us to go around the wasteland and do a bunch of slow tasks for her. But if you have enough speech, or there's a speech check, you can actually tell her that, hey, I'm not actually going to do this, this is a waste of time to do the book, and it's sort of, it's, you lose karma for it, but it just completes the quest automatically. But there is a 40% chance, it's only a 40% chance uh, speech check, so you might fail it. So I make a quick save in case I fail it, so I failed it two times, that's okay. So how's this can you fail at disarming the bomb? I can't, I'm not actually sure. I've never actually tried to like. So normally, you can't actually uh, disarm the bomb if your if your um, if your explosive skill isn't high enough. So you can't actually even attempt to disarm the bomb. But I don't think you can actually fail it. So that's Megaton done, and we're gonna we're gonna level up lock picking, and we're also gonna take Black Widow. What does Black Widow do? Black Widow can help with speech checks later on, but for the most part, it's not a skill that we need. There's only a couple perks in this run that are actually 100% necessary. Little Leaguer, in order to get enough explosive skills as to disarm the bomb, we're going to need Educated so that we get more uh, skill points, which is going to be needed to leveling up our lock picking and then repair skills as repair is needed for Raleigh's Rangers later on. And then we're also going to take... Um, child at heart and this is so that we can talk to uh, all the kids inside of little lamplight that way we can trigger the end quest while when we get there it's a little bit faster than just going through the speech there i forgot all, all right. about all the slave kids i feel so bad for them <laughs> yeah oh so here is another point of rng oh we got great rng never mind <laughs> so i'm looking for a nuka cola quantum 
Uh, and the reason why I need a Nuka-Cola Quantum is so that we can talk to Sierra Petrovita later and give her 30 Nuka-Cola Quantums. And you might be asking, well, you only have one Nuka-Cola Quantum in there. What are you going to do with that? And the answer to that is that we're just going to dupe it. So the same way we did the ghost duping with the vendor by selling back his own items, um, by by using a little, you like click on the item and accept it at the same time, and it like sort of adds items to your inventory. We're going to do the same uh, sort of glitch with the Nuka Cola Quantum. It's called uh, ghost duping. Thirty Quantums sounds like the best Fallout Four run you could ever have. <laughs> <laughs> In Fallout 4, uh, Quantums give you extra AP, and since sprinting in the Fallout 4 glitch lift run is really necessary, uh, it, it's really helpful for just keeping you at sprinting speeds. This game, it doesn't matter, but AP is useful for a number of different tasks, but they're not related to, speed, uh, to sprinting in this game, as you just have a constant running speed. Alright, so we're coming up to Dukov right now. We're going to kill him, and we're going to steal uh, stuff from his inventory. And the reason wh why is that... Let me kill him real quick. I he has a key. The help. <laughs> so he has a key on him, and the key is useful for a quest called Shoot Him in the Head. And Shoot Him in the Head is basically going around the wasteland and killing people who the ghoul inside the Museum of History doesn't doesn't like. And there's also other ways to satisfy the quest. And specifically for this run, it's the fastest to just to just uh, get the keys. But say, for example, in the 100% run, we use a, a uh, power armor set that we get from Operation Anchorage to satisfy the quest requirement. It's just that we don't come across a faster item in the base game version. I should also mention that this is an all quest run and that does not include DLCs. So you're only seeing base game quests being completed. So after killing Dukov, we're gonna go discover the Jefferson Memorial. The Jefferson Memorial is key for obviously Waters of Life and all the quests related to the main quest. Discovering it now doesn't really have an advantage other than it's along the way. So you'll see me uh, discover locations that are close to me at the time. So we sort of make loops around the wasteland in order to get quests, discover locations, and then loop back around once we have satisfied those quests. So I'm going to discover the Jefferson Memorial real quick, and then I'm going to fast travel to Vault 101. That's one strat that's consistent among all the Fallout games, too. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go off to Arfu. But before we go to Arfu, we're going to we're gonna stop by uh, Big Town in order to get the quest uh, to save Red. Red also, uh, Red is a little girl who gets trapped in Germantown, uh, the police station. It also ties into another quest that we get from the Slavers in Paradise Falls, but I'll explain more about that when we get to the point, or get to that point. I don't think I've ever done this quest with Red. Yeah, normally it's uh, a quest that's easy to, to miss, because you have to specifically go to Big Town. Otherwise, if you go to the Slavers first, you'll just end up enslaving her. So by getting this quest first, we're also going to complete the Slavers quest in an odd way. We're not actually going to enslave everyone that they want us to. We're going to kill one guy, enslave one girl, and then we're going to save Red. And for some reason, uh, Big Town is going to get raided, and that's how it's going to satisfy it. Also, a nice little bit of parkouring over a mailbox to get inside of here. Gotta love this engine's uh, hey, parkour. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Fallout 3 game engine, the one that looks gray all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so would stop hopping with um, speed cripple be slower than just walking? Yes. So stop hopping, I, I forgot to explain earlier when I was in the vault, when I was flicking my mouse and uh, you could hear maybe some of the button clicks, we're, we're holding W, releasing W, jumping, flicking our mouse, and then hold W again, and that gives us a speed boost. Uh, it's sort of like uh, B-hopping in the, in the Source engines. But it does not add on to speed cripple speed. So the speed that I'm running at now, I could stop hop, but it would actually be slower because it takes up a bit of time. You build up momentum, and then you reach a, a peak speed, which is almost the same as speed cripple, but, it's not, but it doesn't like hold that speed. It's a question that I get asked often in my, my other Fallout, 4, Fallout 3 runs on YouTube. And so here we are. In our view, we're going to pick up the quest Blood Ties. And so, as, as is the way this quest goes, 
this is a story about cannibalism. <laughs> Basically, a guy, there is a dead family with like bite marks and, on them, and then one of the members of the family is missing, and we're basically doing an investigation to figure out where he is. When I played the game for the first time, this quest was the first one that made me like, oh, this is a this is something different completely. Mm -hmm. This game is something different altogether. Mm -hmm. It is. And so we're going to just check on all the residents because Evan King's like, why aren't the residents or they want wants to make sure the residents are OK. Was this your first Fallout game, Elon? This was not my first it's Fallout nice game. My first Which Fallout was game first was one? actually Fallout 4. Wow, this was my first Fallout game, followed immediately by New Vegas. Alright, and so we checked on all the residents, and we've completed the first part of this quest. And so we're going to talk to Ed and King, what did they tell, you? tell them that they don't know where the Wests are, and that I have to go find them. And actually, it's what's funny is that the Wests are located like under like this uh, train station that we're about to discover if we enter it and then go through a few passages in there that's where one of the west members is he's with the group of cannibals over inside of the uh, this trace this train station do you want to explain Northwest what you did Center. where it looked like you were floating down <laughs> oh so i forgot to explain with that as well too thank you for reminding me so you just saw me jump off an edge and not take any fall damage well, another advantage of quick saving and quick loading is that it resets your momentum in the air. So you don't actually take fall damage, or if you want to avoid fall damage, just quick save, quick load in the air, and you won't take any fall damage. Nice little strategy for the people playing this game casually so that they can like just get to some places that they normally can't get to. And you can use that to get a cliff cripple instead of a normal speed cripple, right? Mm-hmm. So the way I got speed cripple earlier was with the missile launcher where I broke my legs and reloaded my quick save at the same time, adding on the cripple speed to my player. But you can also jump off a cliff and break your legs, and it'll do the same thing. Cliff cripple, though, is infinitely less consistent, though. You will most you most likely won't get it. If you watch the any percent run of this game, you'll notice that we just jump off a cliff instead of getting the missile launcher, and that is because it's a lot faster. It saves about 20 seconds over. Uh, stop hopping to... Uh, the vendor next to Megaton and getting the missile launcher. So if you notice, I got the Slaver's Quest from Paradise Falls. We have to get Arkansas, Susan Lancaster, and then Red from uh, Big T for Big Town. And so the reason why we got Red's Quest first is so that we can satisfy the requirements without actually going through the the process of enslaving her. So we're going to rescue her first. Big Town's going to get raided, and that's how it's going to complete the quest. And so, all we need to really do is enslave Susan Lancaster. We're going to go off and kill Arkansas instead, who is going to be in Minefield, which is where we are heading to now. Along the way, we're going to discover Germantown Police Station, and this is also where Red is located, but we can't do it right now. And this ties back into our leveling. We need to get 100 on the lockpick, because in this run, forcing lockpicks is way faster than getting uh, lockpicking them manually. It adds a an extra element of RNG, which is not always the greatest, but it is a lot faster and it is the current uh, best tactic for this run. So Germantown just got discovered as I passed by it, and now we're heading off to Minefield. Did you, uh, like me, get uh, insta-killed like, the second you stepped into Minefield? Not knowing what <laughs> happened whatsoever, your last quick save was five minutes before, and you just <laughs> instantly get one shot, it's like, oh. The game's broken, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be honest with everyone here. I have actually never played this game casually, in a sense. I've what? done lots of speedruns of this game, but I never actually played it casually beforehand. And so the first time I ever went to Minefield, when I was first learning the All Quest run, we have a, a speed cripple, so we moved too fast for these mines to get us. As you oh. notice... Oh, sorry. No, I was gonna say, I was gonna say like so is uh, getting into Fallout Four and maybe learning to run a Fallout Four it inspired you to run Fallout Three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I r first started running Fallout Four, I I got a pretty good any percent time, and as a result of it, I was like, okay, I don't want to play Fallout Four forever. What are the other games in the Fallout series? I looked at Fallout Three, 
And one of the my friends in the community, Radioactive 03, who is also a mod for Fallout 3, he taught me the any percent run. And so I never played Fallout 3 before that, other than like maybe booting up the game for five minutes and then getting. I specifically re specifically remember that I got out of like this is about 2018. I got out of the vault. I went to Megaton. Went to Super Duper Mart to ask to do more 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 risk quest. Excuse me. And then I got killed by a Radrich, and I said, I'm done with this game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times I've played a game like that where I'm just like, I'll get to like the first boss or like the first enemy die. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> I had a friend who did not make it out of the vault before deciding this was the worst game he ever played. <laughs> so, we've been using a 10 millimeter pistol this whole time. That's not going to cut it for the rest of this run. So, we're just gonna go and grab the Alien Blaster instead. And if you don't have Mothership and Zeta installed, the Alien Blaster just spawns there. There's a crashed alien ship, as you see. And so, yep, just... That's if you wanna get the Alien game? Blaster early on in the game, just un just deload the Mothership Zeta DLC, grab it, and then you can go and turn it back on and have Alien Blaster. <laughs> I never knew that was in the base game. Mm-hmm. It's in the same spot as Mothership Zeta, only you don't get teleported into the spaceship. So along this run, we're going to discover some lo more locations, Vault 92 and Oasis. Oasis is famous for being the, the place where Harold end up getting stuck. A classic Fallout character from... Is it Fallout 1 or 2? I believe it's Fallout 1. Both. He's in both. Oh, he is in both. That's and right. And I think he's in Brother of, uh, Brotherhood of Steel as well. Mm-hmm. This what was my do. first Fallout game, so seeing Harold, I had no idea any connection. I was like, oh, he's just a tree man, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Harold's a cool guy. So we discover Vault 92, and the way we're going to discover Oasis is not atypical. Uh, we're going to, instead of running around the mountains, we're simply just going to find a spot in the rock to clip. Not find a spot, there is a spot that allows you to clip in. And so we're just going to clip through the rock faces, and then discover Oasis from the other side. Yet another technique of quick save, quick load clipping, which is a, basically the main tech of this run other than speed cripple. Now it's also going to be a lot of walking as well. <laughs> now, if you did this glitchless, how long do you think it would take you? Glitchless? Would you include stop hopping as being a glitch or not? Uh, I wouldn't, just because it's a new Vegas. In that case... This might be because if it's glitchless and we're not using any cheeses on some quests, maybe about three or four hours, I really wouldn't know. Because a lot of the strategies that we do um, are like really much, are really any percent, any percent specific. And I don't know how long it would be to actually go about the intended way, since I ha haven't done a lot of these quests the intended way. So, gonna get in my spot. And we're gonna clip through, just like that. That probably looked a lot easier than it was. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely, most, you know, it definitely did. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fallout 3 clipping isn't really a lot about, like, I would have to say that there are certain clips that are very easy to get, like most people could learn them. And then there are some clips you have to mess around with, and then also, sort of get a better idea of where the spot is to clip. For example, that clip I just did into the rock face, there's a very specific spot you want to be. The rest of the rock face won't clip you through. So you have to know where to like position your, your position yourself. All right. And so here in Vault 92, we're going to go grab the Stradivarius violin. We're not going to give it to Martha later on because the museum guy is going to take it and give us more money and also complete the quest faster so <laughs> did you just Sorry, clip Martha. in third person fall into the warp zone while grabbing the violin mm -hmm. so what i did there was what? An <laughs> it was a glitch called third person interaction and so by being in third person while clipping i'm able to interact with objects on other sides of walls and so i was able to pick up the violin while being in third person without actually being inside and so that is another glitch that is it's not used a lot but it is used a fair amount for example any percent uh, we use the third person interaction glitch to pick up the geck inside of uh vault 87 i believe 
And so we're going to make our way to the Republic of Dave. Uh, Dave, we really have no business with him other than we just need his key uh, for shoot him in the head. And so he's he also brainwashed an entire town into m making him believe that he's like they're the, the best thing ever. So that's OK. <laughs> We do a lot of these third. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go right Pretty ahead. Good. Yeah, a lot of these locations too uh, will be used not in this category, but in other categories. For example, in all bobbleheads, there's a bobblehead in, in the Republic of Dave, and so that makes for an interesting watch. If you ever watched the hundred percent run, a lot of the same techniques and same locations you'll see us go to, just with modified strategies as to complete different requirements. What were you the saying, Republic Joe? Of, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just uh, going to say that we do that third person interact in uh, New Vegas. We're at the elevator, right? Oh, uh, yes. It's something that persists across games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glitches between Fallout 3 and New Vegas are very much, uh, they do carry over because it basically is the same game engine, even the same assets. All right. Republic of Dave Dunn. Sorry, what were you? What were you guys saying? I was gonna, I was gonna go off and say that the Republic of Dave just doesn't sound like an actual town name to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a super serious mm -hmm. man. I think that's like the appeal of the Fallout, <laughs> the, the Fallout series. Like the interesting characters that you can see rise during what is basically a nuclear wasteland where law and order has been forsaken it makes for an interesting game design and that's probably that's one of the reasons why i love this game series is because of just the many different interesting ideas that you get out of it that aren't typical to a lot of games all right so next we're going to go off and do superhuman gambit with the mechanist but along the way we're going to kill a guy called hannibal hamlin and basically, there is a slaver in um, in downtown DC that wants him dead because this guy, if I recall correctly, is like trying to help slaves get away. If you've noticed from the beginning of this game, a lot of the quick options are the bad, like the bad options. We're gonna lose a lot of karma in this run, which is okay. But it's unfortunate. But that's the way that the fastest quests are done. So when you say yeah. like, you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose karma. Does that affect uh, an ending, or is there like good karma means this ending, bad karma equals this ending, neutral karma equals this ending, etc., etc., etc. So the the karma does not actually affect your ability to be able to do quests or get endings. Mostly, what it does is it helps out with like random encounters in the wasteland. For example, if you have really bad karma and people really hate you, you're gonna have people try to like kill you like have hired guns try to kill you but other than that it doesn't really affect you that much we also don't end up with the worst karma ever because we do a couple good things along the, this route but uh, most of the stuff that we do is bad because the, fa the bad endings in these games are usually the fastest endings same thing goes in like fallout 4 as well yeah in max quest and fallout 4 we sell a family into slavery Wow. So, here we go. We're gonna kill one of these robots before we come back out, at, and then we're gonna kill the, the mechanist. We're gonna talk to Uncle Ro here. He's gonna tell us, oh, there's a huge fight and the mechanist is here. Can you uh, deal with them? And we're gonna say yes. So, let's get rid of the mechanist. That's a very powerful blaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All of that fighting. Now, do they get phased out of existence, or is it just more along the lines of like uh, <laughs> they get thrown to a different part of the country? <laughs> is it like a? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to be like too negative about what's happening with them. <laughs> um, I think they just get turned into ashes. It's like Star Trek. You just end up somewhere else. <laughs> So right there, you saw me do the dupe on the Quantums. We just leave it for later because we have to revisit this area anyways so and make sure that Brian Wilk starts following us. We're going to do the Those quest. The name of the quest is Those, so it sounds kind of odd. But basically, there is a bunch of fire-breathing ants, and it is the creation, I believe, of a scientist. So we're going to just kill, kill them all and save this kid who's like 
telling us that he's getting attacked by huge ants that breathe fire or shoot fire. One or the other. This is also another moment where it's like, this is my first time ever playing a, a Fallout game. So it's like, oh, there's just fire breathing ants running at me and I have a 10 millimeter pistol. <laughs> And then there's a kid who follows you around. It's like, what is happening? <laughs> oh, forgot to explain something real quick earlier. If you notice, my FPS is limited to 60. This is because the Fallout end games can get like really finicky if the game, if your FPS is uncapped. Like you can run at faster rates, and we don't want uh, people to have to be a test of whose PC is the best. We want it to be a test of skill. So we intentionally limit our game to 60 FPS so that we can neutralize any hardware advantage and make for an overall like even playing field for people who are trying to speedrun this game or all the Fallout games for that matter. Do you move slower at 30 FPS? We actually do not move. Well, I'm not sure in this game. We might or we might not. I have not checked the speed reports. All I know is that above 60 FPS, things get wonky. Very wonky in, in all <laughs> of these games. To be fair though, I've never had a PC bad enough where this game won't run at like 30 F or like above 30 FPS. Even for its time, it is a bit of a dated game, but it adds to the appeal in my opinion. So are there different categories for the consoles then, I assume, or, or does anyone really work with the consoles at all right now? So there are different, like, there are console runs, but we don't keep them on a separate leaderboard just because not enough people do them. But we do, okay. but it does say what platform. So like, if you look on speedrun.com and you look at some of the times that are slower, you will you might notice that it might say console on it. All right, and then Marigold. And then if all goes right, Brian Wilkes should be here. Yes. So, weird. so there's a chance that he room. gets stuck in the in the terrain and he doesn't show up there. And if that were to happen, I would just like fast travel around to try to find him. So here at the Jefferson, we're going to clear it out because clearing it out now is faster than clearing it out with uh, your dad later on. Because as soon as you, is, if you clear this out and they show up later, they're all in their positions inside of the Jefferson Memorial, which saves time. So you're also going to notice that I just de-equip my gun and then uh, re-equip it. It actually reloads your gun if you do that, so it's a little bit faster. So here is an example of a what is called a stair clip. These clips are a little bit less consistent than uh, other types of clips, but hopefully we get this somewhat fast. Come on. I'm stuck. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Oh. Every time, yeah. it is just so cool. Just imagine the other enemies. They're just having a good old time, and then someone just comes in <laughs> through the wall, doesn't even bust through it just magically just kind of appears there. <laughs> like Spider-Man in a vent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And we're going to finish up killing the last of these super mutants. There he is. Now try and hide. It's RNG where they spawn, so sometimes you can get better RNG. Uh, but overall, I got some pretty decent RNG in this in this split. I'm just gonna double check to make sure I didn't miss anyone because it is possible to miss people, and if you do miss them, uh, well, then you lose a lot of time later on. So, want to err on the side of safety so that I don't miss, uh, so I don't lose a lot of time later on. I'm also gonna occasionally be making quick saves, like in the wasteland. Um, that is just in case if the game crashes. It's not a guaranteed thing that it'll happen, but Fallout 3 is known to be somewhat of an unstable game. And I'd prefer to just be <laughs> air on the side of caution, you know? It just works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here we're going to discover uh, Rivet City. We're going to go back to it later on, as is the part of the process of making loops around the wasteland. And we're going to head down to downtown DC in which we're gonna, we're gonna discover some locations and get some items. The Declaration of Independence is one of these items we're gonna grab. We're gonna grab the satellite dish for uh, Galaxy News Radio. And we're also going to uh, grab 
uh, the, the fast travel for the Washington Monument and the Museum of History, Washington Monument for Galaxy News Radio, and then the Museum of History so that we can complete shoot him in the head later on. So I want to make this, I want to ask this question. Since we said we're going to get the independent uh, Declaration of Independence, are we stealing the Declaration of Independence by chance? Um, the robots guarding it don't want you to take it, but we're just going to shoot him instead. <laughs> so, yes, we are sort of stealing the Declaration of Independence. We're going full Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say that word for word. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> This is Nicholas Cage if he was in the wasteland. <laughs> that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous man. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We're going to go get the satellite dish for Galaxy News Radio first. One of the best video game radio stations of all time, by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Got that clip first try. That clip is a little finicky. Sometimes I don't get it for like a few tries, but seems to be that the Fallout 3 gods are are very much on my side right now. So here is the example of we're going to do a forced lockpick. We're not going to actually lockpick this door, we're just going to force it. If we fail it, we're just going to load the quick save and then try again. There we go. Even if you fail it a couple times, it's still faster than lockpicking it's it, lock picking the door itself. So we got the satellite dish, and now we're gonna leave and go and grab uh, the Washington Monument. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we're gonna talk with Hannibal Hamlin. Or not Hannibal Hamlin, we're gonna go talk to Leroy w w Walker about Hannibal Hamlin, he who was in the Lincoln Memorial. He said we have to kill him. Oh, no, we don't kill him. We just tell him that we killed Hannibal Hamlin. He's like, good job, you can go now. <laughs> oh, okay. So it the Washington is so Monument green. is, is <laughs> it's so green. <laughs> the color palette of Fallout 3. <laughs> <laughs> I find it I cool that the Washington Monument gets repurposed for Galaxy News Radio. Yeah, they do very good with the locations. Yeah, really. Another location that we don't visit in this run, but is like really cool, is uh, the Bethesda headquarters. It's like a reference to Bethesda Game Studios in Maryland. Or it's in Maryland, correct? Or is it Virginia? I think Maryland. the Bethesda Maryland. Yeah. I think it's and in so, Maryland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a reference to like the Game Studios. There's not really anything cool about it, but it's a nice little reference. And you go there in the all bobblehead speed run. So we're gonna specifically take this a path to avoid being talked to by the guy out in front. And here we go. Leroy Walker. See, I went to Bethesda, Maryland, and I immediately clipped through the ground. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> ruined my whole vacation. <laughs> I wouldn't... I, I would... I think it would be kind of funny if, like, uh, they added that, like, if, if instead of having doors, the doors didn't look like doors, but you could actually just, like, kind of, like, go r walk through them and make it look like you're just clipping through the door. <laughs> Show up on Bethesda's headquarters and show them how to quick save, quick quick load through a yeah. wall. <laughs> so we're last, gonna... oh sorry, I was gonna say we're all just gonna immediately fast travel there right now. <laughs> it would be so nice. Don't have to pay for airfare these days. Just fast travel <laughs> to the location. <laughs> so we're gonna go and steal the Declaration of Independence. This is the quest where they also say men. Uh, the robots are like telling, are like showing, like having rally speeches about like the intruders, and we're just gonna ignore all of that. There is a faster way to get through this area, but it is a strat that I am not consistent enough with, and I don't want to mess it up just for the sake of going a little bit faster. I'm gonna Amen. occasionally quick save, quick load through that hallway because there's gas in there, and I don't want them to make it explode. Uh, I just want to point out the game saying game's over. Uh, no, the game's not over. <laughs> the game is in fact close. lying. There we go. And we're going to do another stair clip here. This stair clip is somewhat inconsistent. So hopefully it doesn't take too long to get it. That's okay. 
Got a couple of tries. There we go. Nice. Oh, I, he accidentally talked to, talked to me. I forgot, I forgot to pull out my gun. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoy the fact that even though it's a robot, and even though it still has the little wig from the 1700s. <laughs> the robot had to be in style. <laughs> so now that we've completed our uh, national treasure heist, we need to go finish blood ties. Downtown DC done, and now blood ties. Do you explore like almost the entire East Coast here, or is it just like normally stuck to like around the DC area? Say that one more time. Um, do you try like travel like all around the East Coast, or is the map of uh, Fallout 3 just generally mostly in like the DC, Northern Virginia type area? Yeah, it's mostly just the DC area. Uh, there's a lot of locations that are like that border with uh, like Arlington, Arlington, Virginia, but it is just the Maryland, D.C. area. The, unfortunately, the game engine wasn't strong enough to be able to support a larger area. But hopefully in future Bethesda games, we can get that. Yeah, and the DLCs take you out of town, right? At least two of yeah. them do. One of the DLCs takes you to uh, Pittsburgh, called The Pit. Uh, one of them takes you to... I actually forget where Point Lookout takes you. But the DLCs do take you to different areas, so... Uh, you also go to space in the DLCs, which is pretty cool. Alright, so we're gonna kill the leader of this cannibal cult. Steal his key. We're just gonna take everything from his inventory instead of, like, uh, picking up the key, because it's a bit faster. And then we're gonna, gonna, gonna go tell Ian West to go home and that he shouldn't be with these people. I thought I heard guns. And with that being done, we're going to finish up Blood Ties as soon as we get out of this area. I love how you just float into space and then the rest of the map just loads. <laughs> it's just all, like, even every time I watch the Out of Bounds that clip, it always just makes me smile. <laughs> so that's actually a mechanic that I didn't touch on earlier, is that the reason why we just spawn is because of a mechanic called the COC mechanic. Uh... The COC mechanic stands for Center on Cell, and basically Bethesda was concerned that if players got out of bounds, that they'd be stuck out of bounds. So there's a, always a COC field out of bounds, so that it, once you hit it, it spawns you back in a set location. And that way, players don't get stuck out of bounds, which Bethesda would really like to avoid. Are so those missiles always in that box? Say again? Are those missiles always in that uh, ammo box? Yes, those missiles always spawn in that ammo box. And the reason why we pick up more missiles is because we're going to need one for uh, Ten Penny Tower, and then we're going to use one later on, which I don't want to quite spoil yet. But that'll be fun. We are now going to make our way on another loop around the wasteland. We're going to pick up little lamplight so we can have the location uh, for the end of the game, and then we're also going to pick up Tranquility Lane and talk to Dad for the first time in this game since uh, since we left. So just a bit of walking through the wasteland. You might see some enemies. They really shouldn't be a problem as we're as because we have speed cripple, we're we're running too fast for them to really do anything to harm us. So the path I'm taking is one of the more optimal ways to get around because we're first gonna take a path that takes us pretty directly to little uh, little lamplight, and then we're gonna just turn around and then go pick up Tranquility Lane. Along the way, we might have to kill some enemies, uh, depending on whether or not they can they can cripple our legs. So the way we can lose speed cripple in this game is if we get our legs broken. And so we have to be careful sometimes if there are enemies that can actually break our legs. And the super mutants typically can't, most of them, unless they spawn with a missile launcher, which doesn't usually happen. If they throw a grenade, we're moving too fast for them to be able to actually hit us in the legs unless Bethesda's NPC technology got way better, and they somehow can predict where we're moving <laughs> at speed cripple speeds. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
There's usually a Mr. Gutsy outside of uh, Smith Casey's garage, so we usually kill him because he has really powerful blaster bolts that could actually cripple our legs, so we usually, it's not 100% necessary because it's not like we need to kill him, it's just like if you lose speed cripple, you're losing on minimum like 30 to 40 seconds. And it could be longer depending on if the game wants to give it to you, give speed cripple back to you. I should also point out, oh sorry. I'll say the name is quite fitting because if you're out here, you you probably should have guts. <laughs> For sure. Or more so be a very gutsy individual. <laughs> but I, I would generally agree with that. But who <laughs> needs guts when you can run faster than your enemies? <laughs> but yeah. Speed Cripple, I should say, too, is a very random glitch. Um, the Missile Cripple variant that we do in this run is more consistent than the Cliff Cripple variant I touched on earlier. However, it is not 100% consistent either. Like, sometimes the game just doesn't want to give it to you. And in that case, you have to reload the game. So hopefully we don't need to get to that because we are going to lose Speed Cripple in Tranquility Lane because we have to enter the Memory Lounger and talk with, uh, talk with our dad afterwards. The Memory Lounger takes away our Speed Cripple, so... Here is where the Mr. Gutsy usually spawns, and he is there, so... Oh, but he got killed. Oh! Thank you, Brotherhood oh. Outcasts. <laughs> wow! They saved me some time. Look at that. The Brotherhood Outcast being helpful. Well, I could run right now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So here, in Smith Case's garage, we're gonna go... release Dad from his, uh... memory lounger, um prison for lack of a better term uh we're not gonna open this vault door we're gonna do this oh we're, we clip we missed the clip come on this clip is normally consistent got a bruce willis in there we go there we got go <laughs> only a slight mishap welcome to we're also going to use this opportunity to drop all of our apparel because we don't want to be over encumbered later on which will waste some time so since the pit boy's already open, just drop all the armor since we don't need it. I don't know and why, I'm also that... gonna. Oh, sorry. I'll say I don't know why, but that robot reminded me of the robot from Lost in Space. Uh, right, <laughs> right. I, I kind of, I kind of see it now. <laughs> <laughs> I also third person interacted with the train uh, with the memory lounger. So if you wondered why I just like went through the memory lounger, it's because I went into third person, turned my camera, and then went around and. Uh, got into in it. Oops, I missed it. Oh, come on. Wait, was that? No, wait. Did you just black parade us? <laughs> so what I did there was solve a little puzzle to <laughs> to get the uh, the security terminal to open. And then once it opened, I just accessed the failsafe that the crazy professor put into place in order to keep everyone stuck in there. And by having the, ch the Chinese failsafe enabled, you just release everyone. Chat, someone go back, look, look at, listen to those notes and tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> and now I'm like mm. really curious. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, lockpick. What does Swift Learner do, right. Elon? <laughs> the time to get Speed Cripple back, since we lost it inside of the memory lounger. Oh! Oh, almost. Oh. I keep getting it back. Okay, there we go. Sometimes you can get Speed Cripple, and if you load your quick save, it takes it away from you immediately. And so it happened to me two times there, where I got Speed Cripple for a brief time, I reloaded the quick save, and then I ended up not having it, so... And Speed Cripple persists through saves. Speed Cripple does indeed persist through saves. The only thing that can get rid of it is the Memory Lounger in Tranquility Lane breaking your legs or quitting to the main menu, or the game just entirely crashes. But yeah, that is Tranquility Lane done. We saved Dad, and he's going to go off to Rivet City, which leaves us to finish the last part of the quests that are in this area of the map. So we have to go talk with uh, Sierra Petrovida and give her all our quantums. And uh, hopefully we don't get... Uh, there's a chance that some guy spawns out here and talks to us. Hopefully he doesn't do that, as it can save, like, it can waste about, like, 
Eh, about eight seconds. Have you considered pushing V to enter VAT? <laughs> I was going to say that. I was just going to say that. <laughs> That's all Chad is right now. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> So who might you- Oh, he- he talked to us, that's okay. Ronnie! Good old Ronald. Well, More the like Nuka Cola challenge is completed. More like Ronald McDonald for how much of a clown he is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald seems like the kind of guy to get the grimace shake. <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Next on the agenda is to go to Tenpenny Tower. And here in Tenpenny Tower, we have two tasks. We're gonna enslave Susan Lancaster. If I was fast enough in the first part, we she shouldn't be asleep right now. If she's asleep right now, then we're gonna have to do a bit of waiting in the menu. That's That'll be okay if we have to wait a bit, but hopefully she's not. And then after that, we're going to release all the ghouls that are stuck in the uh, underbelly of Tenpenny Tower because that's the fastest way to complete this quest. Oh no. All these robo brains out in the waste. <laughs> Are you trying to hide from me? No, I am not. Oh, uh, and so also in Ten Penny Tower, we're we're gonna. Well, actually, is there anything else in Ten Penny Tower? I was gonna mention that this is the location where you blow a megaton if you choose to do so. But, however, we did save a Megaton earlier by disarming their bomb. That's the one one of the few nice things we do in this run. Yeah, there's a very long cutscene if you uh, blow oh, it up, yeah. right? Yeah, there is a pretty long cutscene. You have to you sit there and watch like the whole uh, missile cloud, like or the uh, nuclear cloud. Hello. Oh, I forgot to rebind my weapons. It happens to the we best need the of Mesmetron. Us. So, right. um, in the sake of the speedrun, or just, uh, just in general, I noticed that for this whole run you're doing keyboard, mouse. Do you sometimes switch on over to a controller? Is it sometimes controller better? Is it personal preference? So, the reason why we use keyboard and mouse is specifically because of uh, quick save, quick load clipping. Um, it's really fast to just you bind quick save and quick load to your mouse, and that's how we do it. So it is advantageous to to use your mouse, but you can just use um, you can just use um, Great job, a controller if you want to. Oops, I accidentally did an extra line of dialogue. So we got this quest for Tenpenny Tower. We're gonna go kill the guard outside of outside of here and steal his key and open up the tunnels. So here we are. Alien Blaster for the win, as usual. I heard something. A common alien, alien Blaster win. And <laughs> we're almost done with Tenpenny Tower. We just have to release the ghouls, talk with um, that ghoul one more time. I forgot his name. <laughs> oh, I also forgot his name. Oh. Is it possible what? that his name starts with a V? I think so. I think it's Vance, is it? No, not Vance. His name is just We'll, we'll find out right here. Roy Phillips. Roy. I was not going to guess Roy whatsoever. Not even close. <laughs> I was trying to go with a VAT joke. <laughs> I got you. I got you. We're, we're, we're melded. <laughs> All right. So we are now going back to Paradise Falls to uh, we're going to get some kids and then we're going to like release them. <laughs> going to get Sorry. some kids. <laughs> we're, we're, Went to so, the Walmart, got some kids. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're buying some slaves, but we're releasing them, and so we're not going to actually go through this building to get up to this ledge. We're going to do a little bit of parkouring. So hopefully, I get this first try. Oh, yeah, oh, I missed. Oh, I missed again. Come on. There we I go. Like must be out Fallout speedruns, they have parkour, but it's the most difficult and out of the way parkour you could ever do. <laughs> and it'll save like minutes at a time. <laughs> That's very true. Like not games that are known for parkouring, but there are some cool parkouring strategies in these speedruns. Did you so. practice your Fallout 4 parkour? Well, I guess that's <laughs> 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 Alright. 
We now saved, we saved those kids, and now we're gonna finally save Red, now that we have our lock picking up to 100. So this is the whole point of why we put our lock picking to 100, is so we had a decent chance on forcing this lock, which is only 10% even at 100. So, one of these times it's gonna work. Oh no. There we go. How'd you get in here? Oh no. You uh, leveled up. Repair. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, got it. Door. You're rescuing me? And then also from Red, we need to get the uh, the the dialogue about the uh, Commonwealth Institutes or the uh, synth from the Commonwealth. This is the first reference to like anything from Fallout 4 is in is in this game. And so now we're gonna go finish up Oasis. Outside. Outside. I'm so oh, is Red following you now? Oh, I she is following me. Oops, I forgot to go back to German town, big town. Oh, L little mishap. That's okay. <sighs> I'm glad. To That's okay. We go back to to Oasis. Thank you for that call out. I totally forgot that I need to go back here. Red was about to watch the murder of a large tree man. Oh no, we can't have that. There we go. And now we're gonna meet Harold finally. Welcome. A beloved Fallout character. No there we go. And we're gonna use waiting to just get them into position. So they're gonna start moving. We're gonna drink the sap, and then we're gonna quick save, quick load through all this dialogue, because it's very slow. I was wondering how you skipped this. And now you'll see what we do with Harold. Sorry in advance to everyone who likes Harold. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how effective a missile launcher is when you use it against a tree. Oh, that's a groan. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're all mad at us because we killed their uh, sacred being, but that's okay. We don't need to talk to them ever again. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that would make sense though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ribbit City time. You have Here, to wait for the bridge. You Dad. can't clip through the water or anything. <laughs> can't clip through the water? I don't know. How, you have to wait for the bridge. Is there a problem? Uh, yeah, because there's no other way to get to the top. So we have to wait for the bridge. All right, and we're gonna go talk with the doctor first, which is related to uh, the synth quest, or. Is it, is, is it the name of the quest, Replicated Man? Oh. The Replicated Man. I got here a little bit late because I fast traveled to, to Oasis first before going to Big Town, so that's okay. We just need to wait until about 9 a.m. and then the doctor will show up. All right, there we go. You're in the Revit City That was fast. <laughs> the power of waiting in this game. <laughs> And then we're gonna go talk with Synth themselves. Where is she? Huh? Oh, really uh, there she is. She's not normally there. And now we're gonna go tell them. the guy who's hunting down the Synth from the Institute that uh, we know nothing about her and that to leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it Oh, I didn't mean to talk to you. <laughs> That's a little rude, though. <laughs> Enter a conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk to you. That <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to lie and tell him that the synth is dead or we know nothing about... I can't actually remember what we tell him, but we it's like, oh, don't waste your time. The synth isn't here or something like that. And then we're going to go talk with the guy in the museum of uh, this this museum here and give him the Declaration of Independence. And then we're going to give him the violin, bargain with him a bit on money because I did the wrong dialogue option. <laughs> and then we're going to go off and kill uh, Ted Strayer and grab his key, which is the final key needed for shoot him in the head. So if we gave him the Declaration of Independence, does that mean that's Nicolas Cage old or is that Nicolas Cage's dad? Or, or is that grandfather? What I was I don't thinking. Remember, it's no in the movie. Oh? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> And because I waited a bit earlier, we're gonna have to wait for him again. 
Um, you could run around Rivet City to find Ted Strayer, but the simple fact of the matter is it would be easier just to wait in this location, which he's always going to be. I need to wait until the market opens because we have to kill one more person in Rivet City. All right, cool. Hello. <laughs> oh, Ted. No, not Ted. <laughs> Chad is just all about pressing V and talking about <laughs> quick saving and while the while the game is paused. Say again. <laughs> Chad is all about pressing V for VATS and learning about uh, quick saving while the game is paused. Quick saving while the game is paused. <laughs> oh, there we go. The people in Big Town died, which means that the slavers got hold of Red. That little notification that said Shorty died. That means that they got that big Big Town got raided. So Rest that satisfies shorty. the slaver's quest from Paradise Falls. And we're going to talk to Ted Strayer, or not Ted Strayer, we're going to talk to Mr. Crowley and give him all the keys from Dukov, Dave, and Strayer. And his quest is done. I'm also going to pull out my fist here so that we can skip dialogue with a ghoul that likes to talk to us. And then now we're going to do Waters of Life which is a bit of a finicky quest, so hopefully nothing goes goes wrong here. So Dad is going to have us do a series of repair maintenances on, or a series of repairs for maintenance on the Jefferson Memorial, and then we're they're going to get raided by the Enclave. Here we are. He tells you that the passage that he uses for the uh, code is Revelations 216, since that is the... Oh. I didn't mean for you to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the favorite passage of your mother, and so it's also... Uh, he's, he tells it's from the Bible. The so we're going to interact with uh, these control panels from Out of Bounds for the first one. Oh, I accidentally fell down. I was trying to do the second maintenance task a little bit too early. Sometimes when I autopilot, I end up doing the wrong actions. But Don't we all? <laughs> yeah, that happens, it happens. And so we're going to get the second task from uh, from Dad, and he's going to say, put these fuses in place. I've been hearing good I like how he says, I've been hearing good things about you when we have like murdered at least four or five people already. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, but I do want to rem go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, it's fine. Now, I was gonna say, I was just gonna remind Chad if you missed out on Summer Games Done Quick 2023 or any of the Juneteenth celebration, you can check out the vods at YouTube.com/slash Games Done Quick. Go ahead. All right, we're gonna do another stair clip out of bounds, and then we're gonna do this is what I was supposed to do last time, which is jump on this pipe if I can get the jump parkour there we go and then we're going to clip through this fence here this clip is a bit finicky but it does it is semi-consistent and then we're going to talk to dad real quick on this and then we're going to leave and then we're going to go up and open up this uh this valve on a pipe we're going to coc real quick as that's a little bit faster than just like running through the jefferson memorial and we're going to go over here uh, drain the intake pipes. That's what we're doing. And after that, the Enclave is going to raid us. So hopefully uh, nothing goes wrong. I'm <laughs> saying wood. stuff like that. <laughs> Knock on wood. You <laughs> <laughs> said that before the run, too. <laughs> I only say that because the next part of this of this task is to escape with Dr. Lee through the tap tunnels, and we have to do an NPC manipulation on her. That's why I stopped running Fallout 3 Glitchless, was because of this quest. Yeah. This yeah. quest, so normally in tapped tunnels, you have to you have to walk around slowly with uh, Madison Lee to get through the tunnels. But you can actually just, if you're fast enough, you can actually... You can actually just kill, uh, like, uh, down her by, like, shooting her with the alien blaster. And after you down her, you run as fast as you can through the tunnels, and she'll spawn on the other side. There we go. And we're gonna kill... There he is. 
We're killing these Enclave Guards because if we don't kill them, there is a chance that Matt and Lee will get aggro to them, which could set up the whole manipulation. So we need to make sure that these guys are dead. And then we're going to talk to this guy here, Colonel Autumn. I want that jacket. No, oh, oh. Maybe not, maybe not now. <laughs> Why is he By giving talking you dialogue? with Colonel Autumn, we actually skip his dialogue, and we're doing a third-person interaction again in order to talk to him behind this wall. <laughs> it, looks, it looks so funny. <laughs> Dad set the uh, the control panel to blow up so that he get Colonel Autumn dies, but he doesn't. And we're going to push Dr. Lee a little bit closer to the exit, just so that we don't have to waste time by her running more than she has to. What is I thoroughly enjoy how she was just gasp. She just gasped and she's, you know, like, oh my god, I can't believe that happened while she's being pushed downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> not even bothered, not being phased by that, but just so phased on what's going on in front. It's not even realizing, oh, I'm being, I'm being pushed downstairs. <laughs> oh, that strat is way easier than what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the this is the tap tunnel exits that I was referring to. Doctor Lee has to basically. I'm gonna make a quick a, an, a full save just in case, just so that if anything goes wrong, that we can have a backup for it. But if you kill uh, Dr. Lee or, and then exit the tap tunnels as fast as you can, she just shows up on the other side. So you don't have to escort her. I had no idea you could do that to her. Mm -hmm. We also <laughs> killed the other workers because they can mess up the manipulation to do this. So killing them, it just adds an extra bit of security. Not entirely necessarily, Ow. but it adds a bit of safety. Is, is, is that like when you when you shot her was she just just gonna fade out anyways or is that something yet you did that you controlled say again when when you when you uh i don't remember the the lady's name that you shot at the very end that you pushed down the stairs she just vanished was that just a vanished because of the character design or is that because of you shooting at her uh so the reason why she uh, vanished, you mean when she entered the uh, tunnel? Yeah. No, after, yeah. That's because she transferred load zones. When you shot her, she dissipated. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. she didn't vanish. She's an essential, an essential NPC, so she can't actually be removed from the game. Otherwise, the game would like break and you would never be able to complete it. So. Some and so certain NPCs cannot be cannot be mutilated, or they cannot, or they can't be uh, turned into dust. So, so when so when her character disappeared, I assume that means she entered vats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what she did. She entered vats, <laughs> just like we all will someday. Oh, V for yes, vats. Yes. <laughs> What's with the floating buttons? <laughs> So now we're finally going to do Galaxy News Radio. And because we never actually went there early on like you're supposed to do, like you normally get like a lead to where your dad is from. I'm stuck. <laughs> Minor difficulties. There we go. There's a chance that you can get stuck on that clip. But... Because uh, we did all of the main quest stuff before ever going to Galaxy News Radio, um, basically what's going to happen is there is the super mutant fight that normally in, like happens is going to happen, but we're um, basically they're going to be like, oh, area's cleared when there's still clearly tons of super mutants. I'm also quick saving, quick loading here because I'm a bit low on health and I don't want to die, so I'm just going to make sure that I don't. This is crazy to see without the Brotherhood Escort. It's all clear. <laughs> oh, there's also no behemoth? So they're like, it's all... <laughs> they're no like, it's all clear out here, but it's not. <laughs> but we we did the order of quests wrong, so it breaks. <laughs> and so we're going to talk with uh, 
uh, three dog here, my man. And we're gonna ask, he's gonna tell us to go put the uh, the dish on the uh, Washington Memorial so that Galaxy News can be, if I recall correctly, it's just so that we can, uh, Washington Monument. It's just so that Galaxy News Radio can be like broadcasted further. Is your so head if you're wondering crippled? why my vision's hazy is because I got my head crippled by the <laughs> super mutants earlier, but it's just gonna have to stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> At least the run's almost over. Just adds an extra element. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's a feature, not a bug. Hey, <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. More and and again, it just works. <laughs> well, it that is an intended mechanic. And it <laughs> it does work. That thing, it, it actually does work, which is crazy. Very rare does it always work, but in this case it does. <laughs> <laughs> so the quest after this... Okay. Are you gonna talk to me, Three Dog? Thank you. <laughs> 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 that was all. Was that intended? <laughs> it, it, it's all because like the super mutant fight was supposed to happen but it like didn't happen normally so he's still like aggroed somewhat so i think that's why but i'm actually not entirely sure so the next quest we're doing is rally's rangers and the reason why we wait so long to do this quest is because we need our repair skill to be pretty high we also got a fission battery when we were in vault 92 a while ago and that battery is going to be used to fix elevators in this run so ooh, got that clip first try not a clip i usually get first try so that's perfect. nice perfect perfect and so i'm gonna be doing a difference like a strat that is it's needed for world record but it is a strat that wasn't always used in the world record route normally you'd run through like the hospital wing to get into the building where all these super mutants are that r the rally of strangers are like killing but instead, we're going to do a complex, we're going to clip out of bounds in a specific place, and then we're going to do a very precise jump. And this jump is a bit finicky, but put your pages in chat if it goes first try, hopefully. Right, think of the clip. So we have to stand in this specific spot, and then we get clipped out. And then we have to climb through this rubble out of bounds, and then this is the jump that I'm talking about. So hopefully it goes. Okay, that's okay. Get me on top. Out of bounds parkour. Oh, wow. There oh, we go. Nice. First try. First try. First try. <laughs> totally what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> now we have one more very tough clip. We have to clip back inbounds in this area, and it, it's a bit finicky if it goes. So, oops, I fell out of bounds. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. You're okay. You got this. That's okay. We just have to do this little walking segment a little bit. There's a visual cue uh, that I was looking for, but I think I positioned my character ever so slightly out of position. So I'm going to make a quick save here. Okay. Okay. Do your graphic settings matter with this run? Uh, graphic settings do not. It, it, you just want to have make sure you have a consistent. Where I'm confused why this is not working. Oh, there we go. Okay, I was about to say maybe we should uh, press V to enter valve. Maybe that will help. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> that'll that'll help. So this clip yeah. here is very finicky to get back in bounds. There's a high chance of landing out of bounds and coc. So hopefully, okay, that's okay. That's why I made a, a safety save here. And we did not get it. Normally, you know, if you if you clip because it starts, it starts giving the animation right off the bat. All right. This is a very big uh, reset point of the run. It's very long, like very far into it. And many of world record pace runs that I've had in this category have died to this uh, very segment. 
Raleigh's Rangers is not a very forgiving segment, but it was ha it wasn't too bad. I've had a lot worse happen to me than what just happened here. So I'll take that as a win. Sorry if you basically hear that. There's all fireworks that was going on. <laughs> fireworks. Happy Independence Day, everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy fourth <laughs> to everyone in a few hours. I'm playing a very American game for the occasion. Yes. Hey, yes. Get your hey, be more careful. So we're gonna repair the elevator, and then we're gonna kill the super mutants that are stuck here. Oops. You just shoot the gun oh. out of his hand. <laughs> I like how whatever shield they had just deflected an alien alien technology. That's a really, really, really good shield. And then we're going to go finish off this quest with Rally. Or, uh, yeah. And then off to Homefront. We go back home. And we tell them that basically you should leave this vault. That's basically what we're going to do. Oh, are you going to work? Oh no, I got the bad clip here. Oh no. Sometimes when you clip through rubble, it doesn't clip you upwards, it clips you into the rubble, which is what you're avoiding. There we go. The reason why we didn't do this clip earlier on when we were, when we were going to downtown DC is because it doesn't, the COC point in that place does not, uh, it does not send you to downtown DC. It sends you over to this side of the map, which I actually forgot. Oh, I forgot this dialogue exists. <laughs> <laughs> it literally ties to nothing. It's just like a funny thing that exists. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. as speedrunners, we've all said that before. Oops. Terminal compound? What happened? Oh. I thought I completed the Rally Strangers. Oh, no. All right, oh. technical oh, difficulties. No. Oh, no. <laughs> you got this. Sorry about that. I thought I completed it. I killed the super mutants. It's normally you you kill all the super mutants and then you leave. That's my bad. Sorry about that. It, you're fine. It happens. Mm -hmm. This game is all the sin, so mm -hmm. things are bound to happen. <laughs> If I had to guess, there was probably a super mutant hiding in a place I didn't see, and I just assumed that he was was killed. Because most of the time, Raleigh's Rangers do end up killing them. I'm also gonna just pop a few stim or just pop some things to get some extra health because my health is a bit low. But yeah. Hey, you! Get your ass. So, we'll that. I'm gonna make a safety save this time. Alright, I'm gonna double check that everything is good. Alright. Oh, I'm super low on HP. That's okay. In the vault, there is a place to get um, medical items just in case, so I might do that. Just because we have to go through Little Lamplight in Vault 87, and the <laughs> and the uh, the super mutants there could possibly kill me, so just just erring on the side of caution. Unfortunately, there isn't really much in the way of. Oh, huh? I'm so confused. Why this isn't okay? Technical difficulties. If this. If this doesn't work this time, I'm gonna say that the quest bugged out and I'm not getting it done. Wow, he took that minigun right out of his hand. Like quest complete. 
There is an indication. I'll double check it this time. Oh, is this the guy that... Let me see. Quest. Give the fission ba battery to Donovan. That's not supposed to be there. Remember, if you need anything fixed. Okay, okay, now I got it. This, the reason why earlier was that the super mutant was hiding away there in a, in a place that never happens. Does that mean we get to say the thing? Yes, we get to see it one more time. <laughs> no, I said, do, do we get to say the thing? Stay the thing? Stay the I didn't thing. quite hear that. Has it ever happened before? Um, that has not actually happened to me before. Like where a super mutant has been in a weird location. Oh. Huh. Apologize for that. Just little technical difficulties on the run. Overall speaking though, this run has gone fairly well apart from Raleigh's Rangers. You're doing great, Elon. You're doing absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Hungry, hungry, so hungry. <laughs> He's just like me, three. for real. <laughs> <laughs> At least we got the three unique dialogue options that can go, yeah. that happen in this area. It's not but we're almost done. Us. All right. There we go. Now we got the terminal to work. I've never had the super mutant spawn so far in that he's never been there. It, like then immediately. Then we finish up that quest, and then we go back home. That's what you do. It's your high school reunion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, another yeah. vault door clip. Nice. I was gonna ask, but I just assumed you would clip through the door. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we're gonna do a bit of parkour to get the vault overseer to spawn in a desirable location. What? Now this is the final speech check of the run that we could possibly fail. So we failed it once, that's okay, we do it again. What do you want? Did I fail that? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. What do you want? Oh, there you go. Stuff. Nice. There you go. And then we talk to Amada real quick. Where is she at? There she is. I just. We're also gonna pull out our fists again so that Butch doesn't talk to us, which we did earlier. And then we're gonna leave Vault because that is home front done. Nice. Leave Vault Oops. 101 forever. Oops. I forgot that I didn't Man. need to clip through that door. <laughs> <laughs> Too much clipping. <laughs> Just wanted to show off an extra clip. <laughs> and now we're gonna do the final part of the run, which is go get the Gek get out of Raven Rock, and then purify some water. Let's go! So we took Child at Park earlier, and that is specifically for this quest. Hold it right there, lady. McCready! Child at Hearts. There we go. But we're not gonna go th run through the tunnels. We're gonna do this instead. And we're, then we're going to do another glitch called Void Swimming. This is an any percent strategy. I love this strategy. So what we did there is we made a quick save out of bounds, then went into water and reloaded that quick save out of bounds. And so now we can just swim infinitely into the void. Wow, I never knew how that worked. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Gonna make a quick, uh, a full save here just in case, mm -hmm. because Murder Pass is full of super mutants and they can definitely cause a lot of damage. So I'm gonna also quick save, quick load a lot through here so that they're, uh, so that the animation for their weapons gets reset. If the animation for their weapons gets reset, that means they can't fire at you. So quick saving, quick loading is also helpful in that regard. 
This uh, Gex segment is almost the same as in any percent. The only difference is that we don't need to act, uh, activate the fire alarm in any percent. The reason why we do that in any percent is because we don't have the quest at hand. But in this run, we have the quest, so we don't need to activate the fire alarm. Uh-oh, didn't mean a quick load. Here is a trick called Rock Boss, which means we just skip a little running segment through the vault. We clip out of bounds like so. Jump on this rock. Oh, got to level up. Nice. At this point, leveling up does not matter. And then that's the trick called Rock Boss. We just jump on a rock, get through the top. Um, I'm not going to go for that. <laughs> I considered it for a second. <laughs> There is a way you can clip out of bounds and then jump through in the out of bounds surface to like the other side of it, but it is a lot more risky in a full game run, like a like a all quest setting. So instead of doing something risky, I'm just gonna take it uh, nice and easy. Also, a new glitch that has not been seen in this category will happen. Hopefully, I get it. Uh, right after we Ooh. did the catch. New glitch, nice. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. It was found in December. A, a, consistent, a consistent setup for it was found in December. And I'm going to attempt it here. So we're going to get Colonel Autumn's dialogue to overlap with the guard's dialogue. And the way we're going to do that is by... We're going to do this. We're going to get... Oh, we need the bolt suit. We're gonna block his path on this other side of this door. So we're gonna activate the, the sequence. Oh no, I messed it up. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> no. What would Pretend happen is that we would block his armor, his path by putting the armor on the other side. And if his path gets blocked, his dialogue overlaps with the, uh, with the soldier's dialogue. It saves about 10 seconds. It was a new strategy that we added to any percent. And it's, it's a pretty cool strategy hasn't been used in all quests since people haven't been running this category recently. Make sure the geck is secured aboard my Vodabird. Yes, sir. I still like that jacket. Come down and remove it, immediately. it is it's really a cool nice. Jacket. It's a very <laughs> nice jacket, yes. Yes, sir. Even a... Uh, it kind of reminds me of Maxon's jacket in the next game. It's very nice. Right yes. Right, mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of utility. Imagine how many pockets you can fit in the lining. <laughs> Enough for probably vats. Give it a whole vat in there. Yeah. So, you're... Come. So we're going to skip some lines of dialogue with the colonel. And then this is basically the same strat as in any percent. We're going to skip President Eden's dialogue and then clip out of bounds so that we can COC close to the exit door that we need to get to. Like so. On this exit, I'm going to be extra careful just because of how low my health is. Retreating. And then, normally the safe strat here is to just wait out this door, but we're going to actually try to clip through it. I never clipped in the door like that. Oh, uh -oh. that's okay. Oh, <laughs> another level up. There we go. That's how you normally clip, clip through the door. I never actually clipped First inside try. of the door and gotten stuck. I guess I'm doing the classic speedrunner line during a live event, which is that's never happened to me before. There, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to tell the president that we'll take his thing and then leave uh, Raven Rock. He wants us to, to contaminate the water, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go back to the, uh, to the Brotherhood, tell them that I just got out of Raven Rock and that yeah, I'm going to play this safe. Just go like this. This way we don't get killed by the... There's a guy with a missile launcher here. We cannot let him shoot us. That would be bad. There we go. Made it out safely. Last nice part of job. this is to talk with the Brotherhood 
commit the final assault or commence the final assault on the Jefferson, purify some water, and that will be Fallout 3. Hell yeah. This has been a great run so far, Elon. This is a really good run, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Right. And then we're going to skip some lines of dialogue here in the air. Is this cutscene happening while you're in midair? Yes, because I was all, I was <laughs> midair when I st when it started. <laughs> That's funny. That's great. Also, My don't forget Fallout Four is coming up after this. So if you like Fallout, stay tuned because we got more of it coming. Glitchless, even. Mm-hmm. What happened? Did I soft lock them? Oh. I think I soft locked them on accident. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> All I'm saying. Bethesda will make a liar and a fool out of you. You will do something Show one way a hundred times, and then it's that hundred and first time that's like, actually, something completely new for you. Honestly. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> it happens. Okay. We need to. All right, and now we can finally go to the Jefferson Memorial as soon as we gain control. Grand finale time. Oh, yeah. Here we are. The final attack on the Jefferson. Normally, they send uh, uh, Liberty Prime to run through the wasteland if everyone remembers Fallout 3. But we can use quick save, quick load clipping to our advantage, and it'll satisfy the quest either way. As long as we do the uh, use the control panel and press 216, that is what is going to give us the final quest needed to be completed. And so... That's what's gonna happen. I think in the hundred percent run, because they do offer or they do, they do uh, all the DLCs or the what is it, Broken Steel? Excuse me. You have to do this section differently, but because we're not completing anything after we're done with this, we're just gonna clip through and forget all about Li Liberty Prime. I like how you can just through. bypass Liberty Prime in this game and Fallout 4 as well. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk to Colonel Autumn. You. We're going to clip through. There we go. That is the run. Nice. Let's go. Fallout 3 complete. All quests completed. Let me reload nice. my quick save. Quest. And while that's heading on, uh, do not forget if you miss any of this run, don't worry, in a little while it'll be on YouTube. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, hello YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also head on over to twitch.tv slash gamezonequick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> GG. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to get things set up for our next run, which is going to be Fallout 4. While we get all that, this is, a, this is a good time to get up, stretch, get some water, while we get things set up for the next game. Stay tuned. Cool. And welcome back to the bargain bin. Before we get to Fallout 4, do not forget your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel to help support Games Done Quick Hot Flicks, please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily speedrunning content. And speaking of that daily speedrunning content, we got to elongate it back here with some no Fallout 4. I can't wait for this run. All right, we are back. Fallout 4 Glitchless is the run at hand. Uh, I'm going to be letting Joey do most of the commentary on this run as uh, Snowcone Joey is like the grandfather of this category. He's been running it longer than me, and I'll let him take lead on a lot of the points.
But without oh. with, without that being said, or with with, <laughs> with that being said, excuse me, let's get started. So, um, timing starts when I gain control. So, it's gonna start right about now. There we go. Merci, Cotsworth. This is such a beautiful game. Fallout 4 is the best Fallout game, obviously. So it has an amazing speed run. Um, Elon, I can't hear the game. I can't hear the game. Is it? Are you playing in French or English? I'm playing in French. Okay, so French is just the fastest language when we are in cutscenes, where we cannot control our character. French is the fastest language. And you'll see Elon do a lot of dialogue skipping just simply just by talking to characters while they're speaking. It will just automatically skip whatever dialogue they're working on. Hey, you can do that here with Codsworth and do it here with Nora, so we'll have the salesman come up faster. We have a bit of time to kill, so I'll show you a cool, a funny little thing that you can do here. Oh, you could do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know you could do that. That's funny. See, I tried that before, um, <laughs> and I ended up breaking one of my tables. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very easy. Yeah. This little window here, too, is a bit off-centered. Oh, it is. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> so, basically... Uh, Throughout almost every single dialogue, we're going to be mashing uh, down on the dialogue and also four, uh, the number four, just because that's also the same mechanic. If you mash them back and forth very quickly, it'll just go through dialogue in an instant. Um, here he's going to pick, uh, <laughs> he's going to do 10 endurance and 10 agility because that is tied to our um, sprint speed and our, um, not our sprint speed, but our ability to sprint and how long it goes. Um, so we're just going to max those out at 10 and we'll be getting more endurance items along the way. So why'd you put four into luck? Any percent, basically. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Here, just more dialogue skipping. Um, there's an audio cue so you can skip Codsworth dialogue before it happens. Mm -hmm. It's just very basic bone setup. Click through, mash through everything to get out of the <laughs> intro. I'm glad the intro is quicker than Fallout 3's for sure. Mm -hmm. But the thing I have to ask, uh, are we allowed to VATS in this particular game? <laughs> never, never, never okay. VATS. Okay. If this were if we, any percent, we, then it'd be different. <laughs> if, we were, if we were to VATS, how would that be in this game? Um, if we were to VATS in this game, it would... Like, how would well, we do it? Like, how would we do it? Oh, press Q. It's not V. <laughs> oh, it is different. It is different. So, the twist. <laughs> so we're no more waiting. V for bats. We're just waiting for this little cutscene to end, and then we're gonna sprint out. We have timed every uh, voice variation in language, and this is just the fastest one for all these little bits. You know, very specific yep. paths through the trees, sprinting the whole time. Here's the list skip. This is a dreaded list skip. Um, basically, um, once your character says the word list and you start spamming E, uh, you'll be able to skip the general's dialogue. Sometimes it takes forever, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, but Elon got it first try, which is wonderful. Nice. Here we go. And now another cutscene. The intro to this game is pretty, pretty slow. Oh, We're just going to be waiting around yeah. in the cryopod. Yeah, a lot of cutscenes, a lot of cutscenes. In Max Quest, you get to watch the same cutscenes twice. Oh. You're playing on the old patch, right? Mm-hmm, yep, so, for the pickpocket. Yep, for the, there's a specific pickpocket that you can do on the old patch, which you can't do on the current patch. And also the loading screens on a current patch will take minutes. It'll take, it'll sometimes add, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes to a run, uh, considering what category you're doing. But it is more stable. So it's a give and take. Very basic stuff, just walking through the vault. It's, it's faster to walk on the rail. <laughs> I mean, as you do. That's what of I do. Of course. 
Anywhere I go, I tend to, I tend to walk on rails. That does seem to be faster. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Float the skateboard. <laughs> yeah. In this yeah. game, you can just float on the rails, you know? You're not, there's no risk of slipping and falling. <laughs> the doctor's following you pretty closely, which is nice. Sometimes the doctor will just be stuck on the other side of the vault, and you have to wait, lose 30 seconds for him to... Uh, come find you. Now this is another thing, we'll just skip his dialogue Excuse by pressing E and then immediately going into the cryo chamber. Don't gotta talk to your wife or son, it's very sad. <laughs> and now we got a cutscene, a long cutscene, which is fun, so much fun in this speedrun where the first minute is a very long cutscene. For a lot of people, I feel like this cryo sequence stood out a lot to them about Fallout 4. From the people I talked to in like my personal life who, are, who played this game casually, like, yeah, isn't that the game with the cryo sequence? And I'm, I'm kind of confused <laughs> as to why this sticks out so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how it works with lore reasons, where it's only you uh, that survive when... I don't understand why they keep you on ice. They just do. <laughs> the Institute has think, no reason to. Mm -hmm. I think, well, in the game, they explain that they want to have an extra donor's blood just in case. And also, then your father become or your your son, whose father, <laughs> becomes yeah. leader of the Institute. Yeah, and he's like, I want to save father. my son. His father. <laughs> It's so confusing. It is Your weird. Your son is called Father. <laughs> yeah, he's not called anything else. You can't call him, like, he's not named Sean. He's just Father. Yeah. It's an interesting de design choice, but one that, like, I guess sets it apart. You know, the typical Be Bethesda shenanigans. I do remember being shocked when the twist was revealed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, what's gonna happen? <laughs> but you can put your no. X in chat for that. No, no, my <laughs> Everything, everything's gonna be Everything's gonna be okay, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just, they, they just... Mm. Kellogg's big bald head. I don't... Were we, what was... I'm, just imagine like being in there and, and just seeing all that and that you can't do anything and it's your child. See someone else taking your child like that. Yeah, I, I, that would be as like a perspective of a parent. I feel like that would be a very disheartening thing. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there you go. After I couldn't even imagine years. the culture shock of leaving the vault and you're 200 years behind when you last remember things. Yeah. Let's go. So this is the real start of the run. This is where all the no intro runs start. Um, it's very basic. You're just gonna run through the vault, killing everything you see. You can't leave the vault until you kill everything you see. Um, in glitchless, anyway. So that's fun. Mm -hmm. You're gonna grab the baton, smack around a few roaches. Mm -hmm. The reason why we kill them is because if you're aggroed, you can't actually pick up your pick bull, pip, pip boy. Yep. So, in order to avoid that, we just kill the roaches because it ends up saving more time than to, like, wait out the egg, like, the caution to hidden message yep let me grab our pistol which we'll be using for a lot of the run and there's been the great debate of whether shooting or smacking these guys around is faster <laughs> usually just hitting them is faster than trying to precisely aim i mean i also gonna want to give props to you know to the main character because like if I woke up and I didn't realize 200 years have passed, I'd just get out of nowhere and I'd be scared on why these cockroaches are, like, three feet long. <laughs> yeah, it is very odd. It is very odd. You are ready for... It seems like you're the perfect soldier. You're just ready for any fight that comes at you. Yeah. It's like, okay, I guess there's giant roaches now. Like, okay, I'm just gonna... <laughs> I wonder how they got into the vault, though, you know? It's supposed to be sealed, yeah. right? Well, they opened it. That was the thing. The, the people, the Institute people opened the vault so many years ago. Mm-hmm. And this little unskippable cutscene as well. Also, think about how, like, knowledgeable the person is. Like, they're right there, they just, you know, 
no. Okay, this is something that goes right here. They just know. 200 years are fast. They just know. Of course. There's a little bit yeah. of extra 10 millimeter ammo right there. Uh, if we walk towards the vault door, if we like enter that little zone that he was just in, um, the elevator beyond this door will already be at the bottom of the door because we walk into its loading zone. Um, if we don't do that, then we have to wait for the elevator to come down uh, the vault, and it just saves time. Not a glitch. There's a big debate in this game and many other games of what constitutes a glitch and what does not. not this is one of the runs that I've seen with the, some of the most community interaction. Like, people who don't even run this category will go out and find strats that are useful for this category. People who don't mm -hmm. like glitchless at all will find like strats that save us minutes and you know of time. Mm-hmm. That's true. One member of like the Fallout commu four community who ne didn't necessarily give us uh, strats, but he gave us ideas because he has so much knowledge is a is a Twitch streamer named Barexia. Uh -huh. And a lot of his ideas were used or some of <laughs> some of it some of his ideas for uh, locations for drugs, which can give us more endurance, which will help our AP bar uh, deplete less, were given to us from him. Yep, definitely. This run, I, I like to say, is pretty straightforward. I mean, it is glitchless in most senses. So um, in that trash can, there's two fragment uh, frag, ugh, frag grenades that are always there every single time. We use them later in the run. Um, there's always stim packs on this guy right here. Very useful. Um, here at Red Rocker, we'll be getting dog meat, a little dog companion um, that will save us time later. We just got to talk to him a little bit. Okay, so he's pulling out the gun here. Um, if you aim your gun during dialogue, it will skip your own dialogue. So we'll okay. be using that a few times in the run. Okay, I thought I, 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 I was a little scared there for a second. No, <laughs> <laughs> he, will, he will not hurt the dog. He is our best <laughs> friend. <laughs> He's our best Good. friend in this room. Good. This dog saves us maybe 30 seconds or more. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty simple in Concord. We're just going to save the museum or save the Minutemen, kill these raiders. I'm going to maybe check some of these raiders for any items. Most of the time they have nothing valuable on them, but sometimes they might. Yep. And like every Fallout speedrun, we're playing on very easy. You know, one or two shots will take these guys down pretty quickly. Um, we always check the body. That's a good. That's a good little bit of RNG right there. The farm hand clothes. Um, before we get a, a speed item later, the farm hand clothes will give us plus two endurance until that time. And again, the higher endurance we have, the slower the um, drain of our AP. So the slower um, drain of our sprinting time. So Elon will be able to put that on a little bit and save, you know, fifteen seconds maybe. Mm hmm. Yep. And, and the clothing on that guy, 100% RNG all the time. Oh. So it, there oh. is a good there amount go. of RNG in small things, but I would say there's not a lot of RNG in a lot of the bigger strats. But here at Museum, we have to kill everybody in the museum. You know, par for course. He's checking Ooh, these little out. chem coolers. Buff out, another item that'll give us plus two endurance. Um, so slower, you know, uh, AP drain. Very good strats all all around. Yep, kill everybody. Talk to the Minutemen. Um, we're gonna save the Minutemen. We're gonna be using them later in the run. But he's just gonna mash through some dialogue with Preston Garvey and Sturgis. Um, Perception bobblehead. Uh, just for fun. Really, just we just pick it up for fun. I mean, yeah. In this run, it really doesn't do anything. But I, I started picking it up for no reason. It's fun. I mean, you're good. Um, I think it helps because I'm doing laser rifle. Oh, you are doing laser rifle, so it does help with to, with rifle. And you are correct. Yeah. And the runs where you use a, uh, a rifle, then yes, definitely. There are many strats you can do and still complete this run in a very good time. Um, what Elon is doing there is just jumping off for fun because once you start loading, you're not gonna stop loading. So you can just like jump off of buildings and still just load normally. It's mm -hmm. not a strat. It's just fun. <laughs> yep. Uh, he he went and picked up the fusion core in the basement of uh, the museum. He unlocked the door and got the fusion core so he could power up this power armor. Which are you going to be using the power armor later in the run for green tech? Yep. 
Oh, for mass fusion? Okay, cool. Yeah, mass fusion. So, yep. So he's just gonna use this little minigun and the power armor to kill every raider out here. Um, what he's doing there, he's uh, to skip the falling animation um, with the power armor, to skip the landing animation, excuse me. Um, you can switch your camera angles um, by going to third person camera and then switching back. You skip the landing animation with power armor and save yourself a little bit of time. Not a glitch. Just intended mechanic. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, my... <laughs> <laughs> tabbed out a little bit? Yeah, I accidentally tabbed out by accident. <laughs> there you go. So he's, we're just going to... He's just going to use the minigun to kill all these raiders. Um, Is there any left? Nope. Uh, nope. I think you're good. Yep, so you can fast travel back to the Museum of Freedom after this, too. Um, he's picking the perk Solar Powered, uh, which gives us plus two endurance uh, in the daytime. Um, again, all sprint speed stuff. And then he's getting Action Boy, which um, lets our action points recover faster. I'm so curious how fast travel would work in, in you know, outside of a game aspect. Like, imagine just, if we like, could fast yeah. travel. Like, I know we were joking about it in the last one, but just, like, how it looks. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, you just, like, you're, you're, you're basically not interacting with anyone. And you just wake up somewhere else. Like, do, does your body, like, teleport, or do you, does your body move at, like, the flash level speeds? <laughs> I actually had a funny comment from, uh, from, uh, uh -huh. somebody on one of my Fallout 4 videos, and they were like, just look at this from the perspective of, like, your father. He lets you out of the vault, and he just sees a man just, like, warping around the map, and then all of a sudden he's there completing everything that you were supposed to be about. You can leave now, yeah. you're good. <laughs> so he's just gonna talk to um, Preston Garvey there for a little bit. Make make sure they head on to Sanctuary. Sometimes if you don't talk to them um, long enough, they just won't leave the museum, mm -hmm. which is another little bit of Bethesda RNG. Mm -hmm. I thought for Anytime. a second that the dialogue wasn't done, but I just wasn't hearing my game that well. I guess my game uh, audio is a bit low. Yep. Straightforward. Uh, it's I. I feel like Glitches is one of the more straightforward Fallout runs because there's not a lot of secrets. There's not a lot of crazy tricks. Um, are you going for the med box? Is that what you're doing? You're going to head to yep. this little med box. This med box is always here. It's RNG wood in there, but stim packs are always good. Rataway is always good. Um, there's a Nuka Cola Quantum that always spawns. At least one will always spawn in there. Um, I posted a picture in the Discord the other day where I was just doing a test run and there was three in there. Nuka Cola Quantums, we talked about it a little bit in Fallout 3, but they give you a lot of your uh, AP back, like very significant chunks of your AP back. And we use them later um, in the run where we have a very long running section. So the more Quantums you can find, the better. They save a good amount of time. They save more time depending on how uh, how much endurance you have. Elon, did you put on the farmhand clothes? I did. I did when I uh, got Action Boy and Solar Powered. Yep, so right now we would be at uh, 14 endurance, which is very good. Max, I think max for unlimited sprint is 16, 17? Mm-hmm. Yep. I think so. I, I would have to double check on that, but I think it is 17. So he's going to get this fast travel point just so he can fast travel to it. This puts him on the other side of this location, which saves time than just running through it. I sh we should mention in-game time. That is how all of these speedruns are timed, is in-game time, because somebody's hard drive could be faster than someone else's, and if their hard drive is faster, then they're going to get a faster time. So we measure by in-game time as to not, again, to the point I made in the earlier run, to make it not about who has better hardware, but who has the better strats and the better uh, speed running capabilities. It's great. I love. I love that we do that. Mm -hmm. um, so really Elon, nice, yeah. yeah. Elon went and got the fast travel point for Grey Guard, and we're going to be fast traveling there later. Another thing that's just consistent about the Fallout games is you you just find stuff and use it later. Like mm -hmm. the fast travel points, for example, we did a bunch of that in Fallout Three. Now this strat, Elon is going for a strat, a highly contested, controversial strat. It's called the it's called picking up the sea captain's hat. Um, this is a hat that gives you plus two endurance as well, so it's essential. Right now, Elon is at uh, sixteen endurance, and if he took the buff out, I'm pretty sure he would have unlimited sprint. Um, 
So yeah, that was a highly contested strat of whether it saves time is going out of the way uh, to get it. Is that going to end up saving time in the long run? And after years of discussion, um, it was found that, it, yes, it does save time. I believe Jam and Rock uh, is the person who made it viable. I was the person who discovered it, and then Jam made it viable within the confines of this run. So that's a lot of fun. There's, there is so many, mm -hmm. like... There's so many people who contributed to this run over the last uh, six, seven years, and it's uh, honestly beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, in the a past six, seven effort. years, we've gone from like one, like high 130s to now 120 flat world record. Yeah, I remember wow. Tomato Anus saying that 130 was going to be a hard run to it. beat, um, and it turns out 121 is the world record. It's 120.41 <laughs> now by Nikolai. Oh, it's a 120, yeah. Mm -hmm. Elon's just grabbing another fast travel point for later. And he's going to be doing that up here at Green Tech as well, just grabbing another fast travel point for later. We got to go to all these places. Yeah. Uh, I should mention that I stopped by the, the police or the uh, Brotherhood uh, post in order to grab the laser rifle. There, This strategy is, 100, is not like faster than the alternate strategy, which is picking up a laser pistol from the gunners outside of Green Tech. I mean, not Green Tech, uh, outside of Mass Fusion. But it's a. I like the strategy more because it's more consistent. Uh, the laser rifle feels better to shoot with, and at, especially at the end when we have more fighting to do, it it really helps in that regard. So I'm doing it more for the sake of consistency rather than speed. Yep. Because with the jumping, laser pistol, uh, yeah. I could lose a lot more time. Yep. Elon's jumping in and out of the water here to um, reduce his uh, rad intake, but also it is a tiny bit faster to jump in and out of the water than to just swim. Um, here in the amphitheater, he's grabbing a mini nuke for later and the green shirt and combat boots. Another contested strat. Um, green shirt and combat boots give you plus one endurance. Uh, unlike the farmhand clothes, though, you can wear armor over the green shirt and combat boots, which is important for the next step, in which we're going to be getting um, a piece of armor that increases our movement speed by 10%. So it's just like the perfect little addition where we get that little extra endurance and then we can move 10% faster at the same time. Elon's just going to run around here. We're going to run to a uh, good neighbor. Are you going to grab a mine? You're not going to grab a mine. That's a different strat. Mm -hmm. so we're going to we're gonna go on top of this bus here and do a little parkour. We're jumping into a loading zone of good neighbor. Um, that's just the loading zone above good neighbor, and it'll bring us right to good neighbor. All right. So in here, he's going to pickpocket, because we're on the previous patch, he's going to pickpocket Fahrenheit here and grab all our ammo so he can sell it. But um, while we're... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Mm -hmm. That's fine. He's just going to buy the speed uh, leg here and maybe some buff out if they have it. Okay. So uh, since we're in Good Neighbor, is there someone around here named Jake? Oh, that's a reference I don't get. Oh, like a Good Neighbor say... Yeah, I get it now. Yes, there is. <laughs> there is. There is someone named Jake in this game. <laughs> Actually, he has a great quest. It's a very nice quest. Oh, it's so uh, great. <laughs> uh, that's very funny. Yeah. Also, Elon uh, stole this the fat man and the mini nuke because we're going to need that later. We do have to come back to good neighbor later, but they won't be aggro like they are now. So Elon's going to do some binding of all his little uh, weapons and everything, his drugs and his, um, his clothing and all that. You can bind your buff out, quantums. We don't really need any other drugs. <laughs> any other I was just double checking to see if I picked up anything else in the chem those chem containers. The one at the police station, I didn't have a chance to check and see what was in it. So I was just making sure that I had some useful stuff. Yep. Uh, so right now we're going to run through Park Street Station, a little train station that has a vault in it. And we're going to be picking up a robotic friend of ours. Mm-hmm. You Fun can facts. run past... Ooh, oh, on. sorry. No, you go if you go to uh, Park Street Station first before going to Diamond City, then the gate just is already open when you get there. Yes, another great time save. This is two time saves in one, which is wonderful. We don't have to kill any of these guys. We can run right by them. There's going to be another quantum at the end of this tunnel right here. A lot of uh, quantum spawns are hard spawns, so of course they're on the route. We can see the magic of that soon. If you go up here and uh, hit the button at the door before you kill these people, 
Um, you don't have a long cutscene like we did in Vault uh, 111, uh, where you like put the little um, connector into the thing and it shuts the panel and all that stuff. If you're in combat, you can just skip that right ahead. No, get out, <laughs> Yeah, that guy. That guy does that sometimes. <laughs> Get more just running, avoiding everybody, just running through. A little bit of parkour, a little bit of parkour. This, I don't understand that part of the game. They just make you jump down a hole. There's no other way to get down there. You just jump two, two floors down a hole. <laughs> Break your legs. Um, Elon's gonna turn around here and he's gonna kill everyone that comes through. There's Wait, a where lot they of people. From? They, they just you. They just follow you in. They all jump down that hole and follow you in. Oh, I thought they just literally just vanished. They just appeared there. Oops. Didn't you know to do that? We're gonna uh, throw a grenade at this guy. I forgot about this trap. We're gonna get his password. We're gonna unlock the computer and we're gonna talk to this number. <laughs> oh, you took two numbers. <laughs> that happens. That does happen. Um, we're gonna grab a few materials here for we gotta build a big, big old device later. Um, once Valentine starts talking, just walk out of the room as far as you can, and he'll uh, he'll skip all of his dialogue. So you can just immediately talk to him and mash through the new dialogue. Um, you're gonna jump again down two floors. Um, kill ev now we have to kill everybody that shows up. Now is the time where we do it. Um, we're gonna sit on a bench and just wait. Uh, one Did you uh, get up and then? Yeah, I've done that. I've done that. So you're just gonna wait uh, for an hour, and mm -hmm. Nick should be. He should be waiting for you. There you go, Nick. Mm -hmm. Nick. Sometimes I'm gonna knock on wood first. Nick sometimes just doesn't like to help you, and he will take forever and not immediately spawn. Um, again, talk to him to skip his dialogue. The door immediately mm -hmm. opens. Just immediately opens. Like I know we're speedrunners, but I just am so amazed in how fast we can make like an hour be in this game. This They're all gonna be directly in front of you. Don't worry. Bourbon? Bourbon, oh, yeah. another another contested strat. <laughs> Bourbon uh, gives you plus one endurance as well. Now this is a new bed strat by Oz, right? Oz underscore DF, Fallout 4 survival runner. Yep, there's Nick. Uh, and then we're going to sleep again, and it skips more dialogue. Even more dialogue. I have to ask, since you picked up the bourbon, how old is the bourbon? It's Definitely finally 200 aged. years old. It's finally <laughs> aged. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay, so... so... This is a strat where there's usually a confrontation here, but if you just throw a grenade and run away, they all die. And that's that. That's that part of that. We're done with Park Street Station. We got our now wait again for Nick Valentine, our, our synth detective. Um, once we get out of this zone. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to mention the reason why I got up when I waited earlier was because in Fallout 3, in order to wait, you have to press W. But in this game, you have to press E. And I was still thinking Fallout 3. So I hit yep. W instead, which set, yep. set me up instead. Yep. <laughs> what Elon is doing uh, here, he's just fast traveling away and fast traveling back. So Nick just comes out of the vault instantly. Mm hmm. We're also going to use this as an opportunity to talk to Preston Garvey after we save them so that we can not have to do as much dialogue with them later on since we're close by. See, I think I came up with that shot and then I forgot about it completely. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you did come up with this. This is what I uh, this was a snow cone Joey strat right here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we're just going to talk to Preston hey, here because we have we have we're going to use the Minutemen to build a teleporter Some later in this run. Not to get too much into spoiler territory, but uh, we need to talk to him anyway. So this is a good opportunity to do that. Yeah. And he's going to send us to a settlement and we're going to help them. <laughs> yep. We went to third, third person. person. <laughs> now he's going to uh, fast travel back to uh, talk to Nick Valentine. And we get a nice exclusive copy of uh, Grognik the Barbarian there.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. The jungle of the bat babies. Yes. <laughs> Oh, and there's Nick. His dialogue didn't skip, but at least he's outside now. Merci de m'avoir tiré de là. J'étais là au bon moment, c'est tout. Right, the, right place, wrong Probably time. Needs right time. Excuse me. Oops. Say again. Hey, he looks like he need, maybe needs a little bit of a uh, hand lotion. <laughs> Only a tiny little bit. He's just looking tiny, great. I mean, just, you know, I mean, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> just a bit of lotion for Nick. <laughs> maybe a new face from the institute. <laughs> Nick's backstory, though, is that he just got dumped from the Institute. He was an experiment, got, like, an, a personality from a cop uploaded to him. And um, then they were like, the experiment's done, let me throw you to the, to the trash heap. So <laughs> I feel a bit yeah. bad for Nick. Yeah, really. Yeah. What we're doing now, we're just running to Diamond City. Diamond City, the old Fenway Park. Beautiful baseball stadium mm -hmm. that is just now, mm -hmm. just now a shanty town. You think in two hundred the years? They, yeah. You think in two hundred years they could have made a better little town? Mm. Uh, we're gonna pickpocket. Oh. oh, he's gonna reload his quick save. He quick save before pickpocketing, pickpocketing the mayor to get into uh, somebody's house. We have to get into for story reasons. You have a level up. You can use pickpocket. That's true. I could use pickpocket. Yeah, that's the Oz strat right there is pickpocket immediately. Oh, but there you go. You didn't even have to use yeah. the perk on it. <laughs> this is a little bit RNG. Tiny little bit. Now, it's interesting that he's the mayor and his name is McDonald, though. <laughs> yeah, true. True. He's also placed there by the Institute, so he's like an Institute puppet, basically. <laughs> Fun fact for everyone. It. I gotta love it. So basically, we're going to go talk to uh, Nick Valentine and his uh, secretary, Ellie, about the next steps into finding our kidnapped son. Just a little conversation. Nick? Oh, so you shoot, you shoot her to skip her dialogue. We haven't encountered one of these yet, but um, I realize we, we have not talked about this at all. But same with talking to someone to skip their dialogue, you can also shoot them to skip their dialogue. Um, you have to put your gun away almost immediately, but that's how that works. Here, we're going through a long conversation. Um, once Ellie moves across the room, there you go. Ellie is going to talk to you as well, so the dialogue focus will shift to her. So if you line up two characters, you can just continue matching the dialogue, even if it does shift to another character. I like how strong it is, though. Like, they gave you the animation for the, for the blood on here. You just carry on as normal. Yep. Yep, and the blood's going to stay there for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> very, very just strong person. Massive props. <laughs> Just takes a gun to like the torso and just keeps you rolling. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so right now we're breaking into Kellogg's house. Kellogg is the man who we saw in the cutscene who stole our son and murdered our wife. And Elon's doing another thing where he just jumps off because he's already loaded. <laughs> in the test run, uh, he did not hit the correct button and then just fell and fell and hit the ground. Um, here, we're going to pick up the cigar to start some dialogue. Oh, He's going to accidentally sit in the chair, which uh, I've done many times over the last six years. Um, he's going to pick up the Nuka-Cola Quantums, which again reset our AP, or give us a bunch of AP, uh, and the Nuka-Cola Cherries, which do the same thing. So I'm looking uh, at this list. We have McDonald's, or McDonald. Huh? We have Kellogg. I don't think there's, in there, see if there's anything oh, else. You're still in conversation with Nick, that's why. That's what I thought. So, yeah. Yeah, so we skip Nick's dialogue by shooting him. We show the cigar to dog me. Elon did not grab the cherries, so I hope he does. But if he doesn't, that's okay. He, he will not be grabbing the cherries. That is, an Sorry. That, is a, that is an optional strat. It is an optional strat. Uh, leveling up. I don't know what he's going to level up. Rifleman. That's great. We're going to fast travel back to Grey Garden. We got that fast travel point at the beginning of this run. So now it's off to go kill Kellogg. Yeah, cornflakes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Here's a super secret strat that really doesn't save time, but it's cool. Oh, there's a buff, buff out? out. Yep. Yeah, there's a buff out. I forgot all about that buff out. Mm -hmm. 
There's been but so yeah, many variations. It's really helpful for like the long running segments of this run. Yeah. It, you don't notice the time save while doing it, but if you compare a segment where you have drugs and like the necessary armor pieces to a segment that doesn't, you'll notice that you'll be saving like 10 seconds without realizing it. Yes. There's also oh, been a lot play. of very yeah. There's been a <laughs> lot of variations on this run over the years. Um, going it, coming all the way down from 132 to 120 is there's so many corners that were cut and like strats that were realized and were used for a long time. It's like oh that's actually not faster. We did the math and it's not faster. Mm -hmm. And that also speaks to like the progression of speed running where people theorize things that are faster, but until you get into the science of it of trying to time stuff out and be like okay so how do you most optimally do certain things. That's when you really understand when something saves more time than it does. And like that's a aspect of speedrunning that doesn't get talked about is all like the planning and effort into certain routes and into certain strategies to see realistically what kind of time you can save with it or if you're going to be losing time. Yeah, I've been I have over 3000 hours in this game and a lot of it is testing strats and timing strats. There's just so much. There is so much. Like, we used to go on... Remember wow. when we used to run on the roof of this building? Instead of just yeah. going into the basement? <laughs> we, just, we just thought it was faster. That's always one thing that, that really enjoys me, though, is, is the evolution of speedruns over time. Mm -hmm. So, like, this always seeing the time go down, like, what happened to like, knock this way, down, like, a way. minute or 30 yeah, seconds or this or that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> This run in particular, like the ancient strategies of this run were like, wow, we can't believe that we thought that this was the strategy for the speed run at that time. It's actually kind oh, of insane. Man. Hacking okay. robots. We thought hacking robots was faster than just blowing them up. <laughs> oh, get oh. out of my way, please. <laughs> this armless man. Oh my god. He's the reverse Lieutenant Dan. Oh my god. <laughs> what happened? That happened. Did you notice, Elon, when, when you uh, killed the guy in Minefield in Fallout 3, how he just like shot across the map and like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and him a ride dog? <laughs> Basically, the same thing that just happened. Yeah, we're just running through Kellogg's little uh, fort here, his base of operations. We're avoiding as many synths as possible. We're going to confront him. Um, there's a military grade circuit board right there, which we need later to build our teleporter. <laughs> um, I actually grabbed two of them, so one of them can get scrapped and I'm not worried about losing it. Yep, there's a few of them along the route. Um, if you only grab one, sometimes it will be accidentally scrapped and you have to find another one. This is another little... It. You're going for the quantum? Another yep. uh, contested strat was that extra little uh of quantum right there. Yep, there's some health stuff there. These guys, the, the aggro twins, um, is the polite thing to call them. They will, they, they're so hard to get by sometimes. Elon they, got they, very lucky. They look like Terminators to me. Yes, <laughs> the Terminator twins. Elon, remember to walk out of the door. So there's a door strat. I love this door strat. If you just walk out of this door, um, the second door won't be closed for some reason. This door is supposed to be closed, but if you walk out that door, that one's open. So mini nuke. That's why we collected the uh, the mini nuke uh, just to kill him in one shot. Uh, he's grabbing all these little electronic bits off of his body. Um, you have to open the doors too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to open the doors. Sorry, yeah. my any percent mind did that. <laughs> yeah, you, you thought you were gonna be able to quick. Uh, what is it? Quick load. What's it called? Can you do the door thing? I don't remember. Load warp. Wait, wait, load warp. There you go. <laughs> to load yeah, warp in out. any percent when we kill Kellogg, we we use a glitch called load warping, which is a basically a way to fast travel um, in interior cells. So sometimes my muscle memory uh, from any percent, which I played more than glitchless, overrides that. <laughs> overall, though, not a bad Kellogg segment. Uh, got a little bit stuck on some enemies, but overall went pretty well. This is a long ele okay, the elevator. Sometimes the elevator will just keep you in an infinite ride, which is fun. Um, so we're going to run. He's going to exit Fort Hagen. He's going to run out of the sight of the turrets um, because they'll make it so you can't fast travel. Uh, we read a bunch of information on the computer that will help us later on to um, build a teleporter and learn where our sun is and stuff like that. So you have to ma always make sure you do that or else you have to come all the way back. Um, Elon is he fast traveled to the Museum of Freedom. Because we're gonna go help the settlement that Preston Garvey wants us to help. We're gonna we're gonna help them out very nicely in a minute. 
Um, here's a strat. Do you mm-hmm. remember who who came? I don't remember who came up with this strat. Uh, I just I just remember it not existing, and then one day it existed. If you get the fast travel point for thicket uh, excavations, you can move again like we did earlier with the Jalber's disposal. We can just go to the other side of this location and save time by running mm-hmm. instead of running. And it also re- when you fast travel, it resets your AP bar, so you do have full sprint after fast traveling. Yep. Now is a good time to mention that the ending for this run is going to be Institute. I don't think we mentioned it earlier, but Institute is by far the fastest ending once you build the teleporter and get to the end because you can complete like multiple uh, quest lines. Basic, like you can do the actions for multiple quest lines ahead of time, and then they'll complete super quickly. Whereas with other factions, you can't. Yeah, Bethesda did a very good job on that. I will give them uh, props for that. But we're gonna help the settlement out. Um, with some, yep, we're just gonna kill him. It's faster to just kill them because Preston doesn't care. He just doesn't care at all. Um, that's how we help them. That quest will be complete so we can move ahead with the Minutemen line. The Minutemen are the faction that we are entering the Institute with, but we're not finishing the game with them. Shout out to world record holder in this category, Nikolai, uh, in chat right now. The man oh, who, good. the man who brought it down to 120. When at 1.130 was thought not possible. Um, we're going to go talk to Piper, a news reporter, and Nick. If you enter, and they have like a dialogue when you enter the room. So if you exit the room and enter it again, the dialogue will be completely skipped. It saves like three seconds, something very short. Um, but still a, a good time save. We're gonna line again. We're gonna line them up because the dialogue switches between both of them. So once you just put them uh, in a similar, like close space to each other, you can just continue to mash the dialogue the whole time. So the device that's be next to the couch, I have to ask, is that a is that a um, television? Is it just a stand, or is it more along the lines of like a washer? Oh, well, that's a washing machine for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. We have one in our home at the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. After talking to Nick and it could have been a mixture. It could have been a plethora of those things. <laughs> that is true. It could be a wa- one of those washer dryer combinations that just came out on the market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So after talking to Piper and Nick, we're going back to Good Neighbor. See, they're not angry at us anymore. Um, we're going to go to the memory den, a place where we're going to go into a memory pod like we did in Tranquility Lane in Fallout 3. It's great to put these games back, uh, back, uh, back and back. What do they call it? Uh, just because there are so many similar plot threads between the games and a lot of familiarity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're good at making. Well, they're good at distinguishing the games while still like referencing the other ones. Yep. So he's gonna talk to Doctor Amari right here. He can back up pretty far because Nick has a dialogue again. You can see that um, Elon was talking to Doctor Amari, and then all the dialogue options were right, just showed his reticle. That's because Nick was now in the conversation. So we try to avoid stuff like that. Line up as many characters as possible so you can talk to them. Um, this is a strat. There's a little bit of a cutscene, a little bit of dialogue during this section. So if you just run inside then outside it'll skip all that dialogue that's a that's one of the only any percent strats that have made it into glitch list mm-hmm. there <laughs> the glitch list run is a whole hour longer than the any percent run so there's not a lot of things that are similar Salut. just talk to amari again and we're going to sit in this little memory lounger redesigned from the memory pods. Mm-hmm. Yep. And this is where, this is a little bit of a cutscene while we wait for Nick to get into his pod, and then she's going to give us some dialogues. Tiny little cutscene. I've seen, I've seen stuff like that. that leaves <laughs> yep. This area of, like, glitchless is pretty straightforward. You know, you just sit in the memory pod and let things continue. In any percent, though, it's a kind of it's kind of funny. We totally break this. If you ever want to see something utterly confusing about a Bethesda game, this section of the run is decent watch. Yeah, it's a very confusing speed run. Any percent. There's a lot of tech. It's. I don't want to say it's one of the most broken games out there, but the ways you can break Fallout 4 are truly fascinating. Oh. 
Where's the member tag? Voila. Oh. There you go. <laughs> so right now we're going in. So we took a little bit off of Kellogg. He was part synth. He was a human that they gave synth parts to. Um, we we are now in a portion of his brain, which we took off of him. We are in a portion of his brain, reliving his memories, so we can find out who he works for and where he took our son. Mm-hmm. And we're just this is this is some great character building. Honestly, there are some cool little scenes here, but we are just gonna walk right by him. You can't sprint in this section at all. So we're just walking at normal speed. Um, you know, it's a cool little section. This is a great cinematic uh, And this whole memory sequence, sequence is why we actually play in French. Uh, French is the fastest dialogue option because of the conversation that Kellogg is going to have with the courser in this memory. It's about 12 seconds faster, if I recall correctly. Yep. What's faster for the intro? Is that German? German is the fastest for the intro. And that's what we use in all um, what DLC runs and a lot of meme runs too. Use German because mm -hmm. you don't have to go through this cutscene at all. Mm -hmm. Fun fact is that Japanese is actually the slowest language for this game. Hmm. How slow is it? I think it's 20 seconds slower. I can't actually remember the timing on it. There's a spreadsheet that Jinjenia, another member of our community, put together, and I, I haven't spreadsheet. looked in that spreadsheet in a while. I was wow, just in that spreadsheet. Yeah. That spreadsheet is still good. I was looking at sprint speeds the other day because I was doing power armor testing. And this is a cutscene. We just sit here and watch this cutscene. This is like the bathroom break of the run. Um, <laughs> basically, if you want to eat something, if you want to drink some water, this is the perfect part of the run. It's like what, like a two minute cutscene, something like that? Yeah, something like that. Oh, he just can't do anything. Well, I can read off and let uh, chat know that actually uh, with Brain Fatales, it's GDQ's all women online speedrunning community. Do not forget that the upcoming event, Flame Fatales, is going to be running from August 13th to the 20th. The schedule for the event will be released a couple of days from now on July 6th. Head on over to gamesdonequick.com slash Brain Fatales for more information. And of course, if you missed out on anything involving Summer Games Done Quick 2023 or our Juneteenth celebration, be sure to check out the VODs on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Games Done Quick. And hey, while you're there, be sure to press the like button on any of the videos that you're watching, or if you're watching us on this on YouTube right now, hit the like button on that channel. Also, head on over to twitch.tv slash Games Done Quick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. All right, we're almost done. Thank I love GDQ. You. Yeah. GDQ is great. <laughs> if you're interested in more Fallout stuff, there is a Fallout anthology run uh, done at a GDQ by Tomato Angus. Uh, many moons ago. Mm -hmm. That was <laughs> about three years ago, right? Oh, yeah, it was a long time ago at this point. I think that Fallout was awesome anthology by the 2020. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. It was right before yeah. COVID. Yep. And Fallout Anthology is Fallout 1, 2, 3, New Vegas, and 4 all in one sitting. Mm -hmm. A very long but interesting run, for sure. Oh, definitely. It's a very fun run. There's a lot of detail in it they explain it really well, if I remember correctly, about watching it live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. He was the perfect, I think... He, at that time, at any time, he is the perfect person to describe these games. Um, he knows so much about all the stuff in and out. So, yep. Did you want to grab the Radex? Do you have enough Radex? Ooh, I sh that's a good idea. I totally forgot to grab Radex earlier. Yeah, so we're going to be going into a place with a lot of uh, radiation. There's also a buff out, remember, on the other side. Oh, yeah. So we have Radax and Radaway. We're going to be going through a heavy radiated area. So we need to protect ourselves. Um, yeah, basically, we don't talk to Dr. Amari. She gives us a little bit of exposition, but we know exactly where we need to go. We know who to find. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to find someone who could help us build a device to go save our son inside of the Institute. Okay, so we're fast traveling back to Fort Hagen. This is an Oz strat as well, where we were always running from Diamond City because that we thought that was the fastest, but when we timed it out, Oz had, Oz had a better strat of running to the Glowing Sea from Fort Hagen. 
Um, so we want to make sure before we go to Fort Hagen, this is our long running section, a very long, minutes Oops. long running section. Um, so we're going to make sure we are in the daytime because uh, we want solar power to give us plus two endurance. We're going to make sure we have all of our endurance clothes on, including the sea captain's hat and the green shirt and combat boots. We're going to have our buff out, which gives us plus two endurance as well. And then when we get low on uh, action points, we're going to use our quantums to refill it. So we basically have infinite sprint all the way to the glowing sea, which is um, a site that was nuked very heavily. So it's very irradiated. Mm hmm. That's uh, true. And I am seeing this in chat a couple times, and I know you briefly talked about, like, the specs of, like, in-game time versus RTA and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, with the 60 frames per second, does it apply in terms of the same thing with Fallout 3? Yes. So Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 have a very similar mechanic in that your, your character can actually run and do things faster at a higher FPS. Uh, Fallout 3 is a bit more finicky in that regard, but in Fallout 4, if you uncap your FPS, I encourage anyone to try this. Is go like turn off VSync and uncap your FPS. You will go flying around the map at like really fast speeds if your computer can like hit super high frame rates. Like um, let's say if you're reaching 200 frames per second, you're going to be moving really fast. Yep, it's and just so, so that we make sure that everyone can play um, with similar rules and it's not hardware dependent. Mm -hmm. for a speed run and even the devs like having v-sync enabled limiting it to 60 fps if it feels very much intended to be played at 60 fps from what the devs gave gave us in this game i wasn't expecting such a green tinge on this run so i'm like trying to like <laughs> look out for, there are like little uh locations that i look out for to make sure i'm going in the right path and i can't see them that well <laughs> yeah you hit you hit a you're in a rad storm which is really funny um so you have low visibility you can see um anytime elon uh uses his bound nuka cola quantums you can see our ap bar just fill up instantly which is wonderful Quantum's also good mm -hmm. in survival speedruns because they give you a bunch of health very quickly. So in, mm -hmm. in any run, you'll really want to rely on a Nuka Cola Quantum. Like I Another said, if we have 30 too... of them, it'd be perfect. Oh, sorry. No, go Another ahead. thing out here in the glowing sea is that we need to pick up the extra the a biometric scanner because I did not get one from Daisy earlier. Yep, the biometric scanner is another uh, piece of equipment that we need to build our teleporter later on. Um, Sometimes there there are turrets you can farm to get a biometric scanner, but that's all RNG. There is one hard spawn, which is always good to have um, in your back pocket just in case. Yeah, two very specific items, a biometric scanner and the military grade circuit board. You need those items to uh, make it happen. This is a very long run. Very long run. Mm -hmm. Have you have you used your Radex yet? I have been using my Radex, but I think it ran out, so I need to. Yeah, pop I that just saw it, that it just ran out. Yeah, Oops. look at that. That's fine. But either way, you have a rat away, so which is great. Mm -hmm. This is by far the long, like apart from the initial run to Good Neighbors, by far the longest running segment of this of this run. Yep. And if you're playing Brotherhood of Steel run on survival, you do this run. I think five times wow yeah <laughs> yeah so here is the location of the backup biometric scanner it really doesn't lose you that much time to pick it up so it's pretty nice to that it's along the route they definitely convenient it's just optimally like if you're already buying something and the the vendor has an, uh, an item that you need it's pretty quick to just like flip through the menus with the with the keys and then just pick it up yep especially if you're looking for stuff like buff out it's like it's all bees so you're gonna be fine it's not gonna take you too long to look for it So now we're at virgil's cave we're gonna talk to the scientist from the institute who can help us get us in there his name is Virgil. He's a big... He, well, you'll see what he is in a second. Mm-hmm. There, there you go. He's a oh. big green super mutant. So we're going to mash through his dialogue, basically. You don't have to do any specific choices. You can mash his dialogue from as far as you want. Um, I'm going to knock on wood again. Virgil 
uh-huh. does like to act up a little bit, but I'm knocking on wood consistently, so we're gonna hope that he does it. Oh yeah, yeah that's Virgil the thing. Does like to drop dialogue a lot. Yeah, that's also the thing we didn't mention with dialogue uh, bashing. If you sometimes if you mash too fast, you will get a lock up where your the NPC doesn't say anything for a little bit, and that can lose you time. Elon's quick saving here just to make sure that nothing happens. <laughs> Is that in ton- was that done? In- Do you know if that was intentionally, to where you can't button mash through it? Um, I think it's just too many inputs at once causes the game to be confused. <laughs> All right, Here time to go kill the Terminator. We're going to go kill another Terminator. Um, <laughs> we're fast traveling back to Green Tech Genetics, which is, uh, we got that fast travel point in the first 15 minutes of the run. Save a lot of time. Your Rad X and your buff out wore off. If you mm-hmm. had another buff out, this would be a good... Buff out medics. If you have any extra drugs, this would be a good spot to take them if you have them. Mm-hmm. A lot of that is RNG. Are you doing? Are you going to do the cool thing? Are you going to do the little thing here? Did you practice The movement? It? No, I'm not okay. practicing up with that. We talked uh, about um, parkour in... Oh, you didn't even take your bourbon. You could have taken that. Okay, I'm just... I'm uh, Okay, I got the frag. I was just making okay. sure the frag grenades were uh, equipped because I thought I unequipped them earlier. Yep. Um, so this is a section that has, in the world record, it has some pretty cool parkour. V- parkour that if you fail it, you lose like 30 plus seconds, basically. So it's just cool not to do it, you know, unless you've practiced it a lot. Um, it takes it takes a lot of practice. Yep. There's a lot of explosions in this building. Um, you just avoid them. You hit these cryo mines. You throw that grenade because there's a man up there with a rocket launcher and you need those rocket launchers. So if you throw that grenade up there, it just kills him. He can also hurt you pretty bad if you don't kill him. Well, I mean, with a rocket launcher, I would assume that would do some some damage. Yep. Where's the rocket launcher guy? Other guy. It's the other guy. You know, there's two guys right there. Ah, oh, there we are. Yep, they got his missile oh, launcher. Okay. <laughs> yep, this is a cool Oops. little... Okay, that's not the parkour strat. But that can happen. <laughs> that is, I forgot, this is a little parkour strat too. There you go. I've done that many times. I can't even do the hardcore parkour strat because I failed it way too many times. So I just don't do it. Very difficult strat. Again, just like almost anything else that's done in this room, we're just running past a bunch of people shooting at us. Um, we're on very easy. They can't really kill us without really trying. Another elevator ride. Elevator rides, another hot point of discussion. Um, they're basically hidden loading screens, but they're not, but they're counted in the uh, RT, uh, the, what's the in-game time. They're not, uh, it doesn't Oops, pause the time. It's a shame that they don't have the uh, just traditional like elevator music though. True. Another good reason for the mini nuke. We just killed the Terminator right there. Uh, grab all his stuff and oh, then- I meant to grab. Oops. There's another mini nuke right there, which we'll need for later. Um, he's going to unlock this terminal. We grabbed something off of the cursor called the... That's what the Terminator, the cursor. We grabbed uh, something called the cursor chip, which is going to help us unlock the secret to teleportation to get inside of the Institute. So that's why we came all the way out here. Virgil was able to help us track it down. And now you can just fast travel out of here. Mm-hmm. Also, I should mention that normally world record runs are done with an extra uh, application called the Pip Boy app. So we emulate it on an Android emulator, which basically allows us to uh, put the auto run on and then tab out and then manage our inventory with the Pip Boy app. And so. I'm, do, I'm not using the Pip-Boy app in this run as to not add an extra L application onto this run just in case if it gets a bit confusing. So I'm just running with the Pip-Boy inside the game. Yep, yeah, it's the official it just... Pip-Boy app that Bethesda released. Sorry about that, Vesper. No, I was, was going to say, I know it just happened, but the, the ad of the tattoo ad that was going on in the loading screen... The the uh, the guy who was getting a tattoo looked like he was just like crying, like <laughs> usually crying while getting the tattoo. Yeah. And I'm like, like it's a little painful up there, but not that painful. 
Yep. Uh, so right now we're running to the to meet. We we went to the old North Church and we're gonna meet the railroad. The railroad in the last game were the people who were helping the runaway synth get away from uh, his institute handler. And in this run specifically, we're going to just kill them all because it's faster. Um, Elon has to do a puzzle. Um, in in the game, you have to like follow like this whole like, huge path and then figure out what the letters are spelling. But we know the password. The password is railroad. So we're gonna use a spinning little wheel and just put that right in there. Um, now this is, yeah, we got the new gear. So all the people in the railroad are just sitting right there, and then we just do that, and they're dead. <laughs> Usually well, they help I us. Mean... <laughs> yep. We have to that's, make that's sure the... we kill all of them. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's one way to get to the road of freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. We only have to kill like the named NPCs, if I remember correctly, though. Yep. Um, basically, later in the game, they're going to make us do this anyway, so it's faster just to do it now and skip a cutscene where they help us decode this cursor chip. We can do it ourselves if we happen to kill them. Either way, we were going to have to be here anyway and do exactly what we're doing now. So it's faster to just do it now. I really want to give kudos to the, to the main character who, you know, not only knows how to use weapons, just grabbing it 200 years in the future, just knows how to do all of that, but also knows a lot about computer technology, who's never touched it. Just knows immediately <laughs> to sit down here and just use the keyboard and then just type in code and like, oh, okay, now we're good. <laughs> he, is, he does know how to do everything, including using yeah. a nuke launcher, which is a little... It's a little overpowered. Yeah, I have to agree. <laughs> Although, to be fair, yeah. he was a military um, officer before the war. In, um, in 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 the lore of this game, the, uh, your main character was a military uh, personnel. So it makes sense that he knows how to use weapons. But the computer technology, that's a bit yeah. of a stretch. <laughs> yeah. I can get some of it because, you know, if, if that's the case, then they know how to use a typewriter. <laughs> and the keyboard, the keyboard is still the same place that so you normally have a typewriter. Outside of that, uh, so we we decoded the little chip that we got off of the Terminator at the top of Green Tech. Now Virgil, he built us the schematics for our teleporter, um, and now we just have to combine it all. Um, it doesn't matter what dialogue options you choose. You can be very mean to him. It doesn't matter the outcome of the story. Um, he, Virgil also has a mini nuke that we're gonna steal. Before, before in the in the before times, this run I think had two nukes, and now I think it has somewhere near six or seven, because it's just yeah. faster to blow things up. It's just faster. And, and again, it just works. It, it <laughs> does just work. It is crazy. <laughs> I'm knocking on wood again. Oh, Preston's in the river this time. Preston's standing in the river. This is something if your times get weird, Preston will just be standing in the river doing it. Yeah, look at him. He's just chilling out in the river. Yeah. It's good when he goes to this island so you don't have to stand in the river and get irradiated while you talk to him. Um, so Preston last sent us to do the quest with the, the settlement. And uh, we're going to talk to him about our teleporter first. And then he's going to be like, you need to help that settlement. And then you talk to him again. And uh, again, he's... He gave us a big paragraph, if you saw that pop up quickly. He was about to do a paragraph of unskippable dialogue. And if you just shoot him, it skips. So he took a bullet in the heart for us. <laughs> I, mean, if, I mean, if I have a long dialogue and I got shot, I'd probably skip my dialogue too. <laughs> yes, yes. I think it's even funnier that these guys are like, the settlement that you were sent to help, like, they died and they're gone. But we'll... we'll We'll, we'll still put you up for a promotion. Yeah. yeah so you, did, you did so great. Man, you did so great out there. Uh, you're the general now, actually. You're my boss. Excusez-moi. <laughs> and now he, he gave us another settlement. To like, Go help those guys. We don't have to help them. Um, we're going to take our plans over to this man, Sturgis, who helped us find the minigun earlier in this route. And then he's mm -hmm. going to tell us what we need to do to build it. Uh, we're gonna build a very large teleporter. Sturgis is somewhere close. Is he in here? Oh, he is in there. That's where he normally spawns. Yep. Again, he gave us a dialogue, so we just shot him. 
tenez. Ah, c'est sacrément brouillon. Yep, he's non. just gonna... Je tiens ça more dialogue to mash. Bref, hein. je vais avoir... Ok. Beau Poor guy took a bullet. So now we're gonna build some stuff using the workshop uh, settlement builder. I like building up my workshops. I like doing cool stuff around the settlements. This is a very cool use of the settlement builder in the story, which I like. So we're gonna build a reflector platform. We're gonna uh, build a, a molecular beam emitter. This is why we need a military grade circuit board and all those little things we picked up, like um, ceramic and plates. ceramic. We need more. Um, there's Back toilets. Up. Yep, there's toilets right there if you need more ceramic. Um, we have to build the generators to power up this device as well, and they all take materials. We're going to use copper wire to string them all together and power it all up. Um, I do like that there's toilets there in case you run out of ceramic. Yep, we just connect everything. It's all good. Talks to Sturgis again. It's that easy to build a teleport. Oh, no, I don't want to do work for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you, you can just mash to the dialogue, and that's okay. You talk to him. There I love all like this he, dialogue. You just shoot at him. Go for you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sturgis. I only want to get into the institute. <laughs> also, also, Sturgis has hair. He has some hair. Yeah, like that's some hair. How does he keep it so well coiffed in the wasteland? Yeah, really. Yeah. Using L'Oreal. <laughs> Hashtag non sponsored. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so this, it, this is another little cut scene. Things are ha if you look above, you can see like pipes like flying about and everything. But this is another cut scene, a chance to take a break, like have a sip of water, make sure your fingers don't cramp. Jet hydration is important. Yes. Water is a great thing. Yes. Especially now in the summertime, it's getting hot out there. Yes. Um, we used our teleporter successfully. We're inside of the Institute. Um, we're going to do a network scan on the Institute just because we need to do the network scan before we um, continue on in the game. It won't let us uh, progress without that. This is, a, this is a little bit of a cut scene. We just, just dialogue. We're waiting for dialogue. The elevator is going to open by itself. Father is just speaking over the intercom to us. You can have a little fun. You can have a little fun. Yeah, I mean, you get a little bit of a second here. It's always it's good to have a little fun. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Now this, I I call these all cutscenes, but this is because you it's hard to have a cutscene in a game like this. But this is where I would consider a cutscene as well. It's another long elevator ride with a exposition over the top of it. Make Look another way oh, there downtown. You go. Walking fast. <laughs> we're not really walking that fast. We're, we're elevating down in a this moderate pace. This is true. Pace. This is true. We are sinking. <laughs> we are passing paces, though. Mm -hmm. Technically, we are homebound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now the run speeds up a lot. The Honestly, the longest section of this run is getting into the Institute, but that's what makes Institute so fast, is once you get in, you can just get it. You can bang out all the quests really fast. Yeah, in every other ending, you have to do most of this stuff anyway, and then do a longer segment after. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially like, Railroad. Railroad takes forever, because you have to do all the Institute stuff, and then their stuff. Yeah, in the Institute and Railroad runs uh, interweave with each other up until the very end. Um, it's very fascinating. Comme vous l'avez vu, la surface est assez instable. More little elevators. This is the fun part. That's our son. That's our son. That's Sean. He's our son. We found him. He's trapped in a glass box, but we're gonna we're gonna help him. We're gonna get him out of that glass box and back. I was gonna say back to his mother, but the mother's dead. But we're just gonna take him home and um um something crazy. He's not actually our son. He's just a synth. He's just a synth robot man. <laughs> Th and this old man that we shot in the chest. <laughs> Quite literally. He's, like, he's bleeding out. What a shot. <laughs> this, uh, this happens to be our son, Sean. Our little infant baby, Sean. It has actually been 60 years that you were stuck in. Uh, 260 years. You initially thought it was, you know, he was uh, kidnapped um, almost instantly. 
Uh, yeah. You woke up almost instantly after that, but no, you were in the vault for another 60 years after your son was kidnapped. And he's now the head of the Institute. He's the big, he's the head of the big bad you've been hearing about the whole game, which is, I think is a very cool twist, honestly. Um, we're going yeah. um, we're gonna tell him that we want to uh, help in the Institute. We want to be a part of the Institute. So we're gonna go meet all the, the, the managers, the division leaders. Um, of the institute, just so we're familiar with them. Um, yep. Yeah. So talking to Ali. You can go now, Elon. You can go now. Yeah. The, the dog is retired. The dog, he's just sleeping at home now. Okay. He's done his duty, and he's resting like a good boy. He. So we're talking. We talked to Ali Fillmore. We're gonna talk to whatever this guy, Clayton, Clayton Holdren. I forgot his name. We just mashed through all the dialogue with him. Um, sometimes these guys glitch out, but we found strats that make them not glitch out. It's been just like making sure we start the dialogue with them after a certain point. Merci. Yep. Like there. Like uh, we have like the initial dialogue, and then we'll count as we met them. And if we just talk to a little bit after that, it'll make sure that they don't glitch out. Mm -hmm. Normally, I get the quest in my Pip Boy for this, but I don't have it this time. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I usually have to manually mark it just to make sure. I like having it up just in case something goes wrong because I've accidentally left dialogue too early. I'm like, where did I mess up? Where did I mess up my my steps? Yeah. And but also, that's like a who, small minor thing. Someone who has joined the institute, Doctor Lee from the previous game, Fallout Three. We we murdered her in the citadel. We didn't murder her, but we shot her and she disappeared in the citadel. And we had a very uh, funny conversation about that. Oh but she's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But her. now she's <laughs> joined the institute. So one so, of their so she. Yeah, so she uh, fast traveled from Fallout 3 to Fallout 4. That's yes. impressive fast travel. <laughs> yeah, DC to Boston is not a, a is a crazy way to travel, especially yeah, in a time yeah. with no vehicles. You don't have any vehicles, by the way, <laughs> and you need to go 600 miles north. And uh, um, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. It must have been. It's like the Oregon Trail. 200, you know, <laughs> but 200 years into a nuclear wasteland, nuclear apocalypse. Yep, so now I like we met all the divisions. <laughs> I just insulted Justin by telling him that his courser that I killed in, in Green Tech was useless. Yeah, I always like, love doing that to him. Yeah, it's like your Terminator actually sucks and it's not good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yep. and we just, now we can fast travel to the Institute. We can fast travel out of the Institute. We can't do that until we complete this quest. When we completed it, so now we're going to fast travel back to the Institute. Talk to our son named Father again. Um, it's very confusing. I want to call him father all the time, but he's our son. That's a very, that's a very good prank, and I'm I'm kind of down for that prank. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. All right, uh, time all to right, go steal so a pirate, dude. Yeah. So we find <laughs> out from father that one of his synths that he created. Um, is an evil raider that, like, keeps slaves and strings up body parts and, like, murders a bunch of people. But what we're going to do is we're going to go retrieve the synth for the Institute as our first sort of mission for them. <laughs> um, we're going to do some some fast travel. not fast travel. We did fast travel, and now we're going to do some more running um, all the way over here to a pirate ship called the Libertalia. Um, Elon's mm -hmm. going to pick up the Boston Airport fast travel point because that saves... How long is it? Say thirty seconds. A uh, minimum of thirty seconds because it skips the elevator ride. So at least yeah. a minimum of thirty. Yeah, we have. Uh, there's a long elevator ride at the end of the game that is skipped just by getting that fast travel point and fast traveling to it. I think the gun is. Yeah, I was about to say the gun is mm -hmm. being weird because it's a, it's like a heavier gun than the pistol. Mm -hmm. We I, I get pistol it. though is one of my favorite guns in this game. Oh, I love upgrading it all the way, man. I do like For casual the play. It really is like one of the better guns to pick up, even though the revolver is slow. It's the big iron on your hip, you know. <laughs> big iron on his hip. Fallout Four also has a great radio in it. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta say, there isn't a Fallout game with a bad music radio. Um, you don't have to talk to him, remember? No, I'm not talking to him. I'm just running. Oh, I thought you were about him. to talk to him. I'm thinking again. I'm thinking about these ancient strats that we mentioned forever ago. <laughs> When's the last time you ran this? 
I ran this seriously back in May of 2022. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna try to kill me, so better make oh, sure I'm gonna try to kill you. <laughs> well, I walked into a raider camp and they didn't want to kill me. That's such such a such a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> We're, oh, hey, we have someone new. Hi, hi, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Surprise Pikachu face meme. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we become a tightrope walker here and just walk up the ship without with avoiding everybody who's in the ship. Um, we're going to go into this little hole right here. There's a stim pack. There's a mini, another mini nuke right there. That mini nuke was staring at us in the face for years and we never noticed it. And so it's like, oh, wait, we can use it. Um, that's the synth right there, Gabriel. We're gonna kill his friends. Uh, he gets deactivated. No, yes. <laughs> we kill his I friends. Forget. Yeah. He becomes deactivated, and then we can uh, walk the plank a little bit, and uh, that'll get us out of aggro. <laughs> because all the other pirates want to kill us still. So if we walk off I, the plank a little bit, we can fast travel away. I appreciate their names as Raider Scum. Yes. <laughs> that is the perfect name for them, because they are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another conversation with our son, dad, father, son, Sean, father, you know. Um, he, he, he got us a little room. He gave us a little room, which is oh so nice. We can go to our room and get some stim packs. Yeah. Through the a little bit of parkour. Jump over the railing. Oh, perfect. Perfect parkour. 10 out of 10. Once we get the stim packs, the quest completes. Well, we don't have to get the stim packs. Once we go in the room, the quest. Mm -hmm. I grab the stim packs for safety. Yeah. Again, safety. with these runs, I'm trying to err on the side of caution in case of uh, unforeseen damage is taken. Yes, yes. There's a lot of damage to be taken. Oh, oh here's Father right again. <laughs> yeah. Vous êtes un synthétique et on est là. Okay, look, um. J'essaierai d'en discuter. Oh, is this the railroad quest? <laughs> no, this is Bunker Hill. Oh, okay. So here <laughs> we're gonna fast travel to the Old North Church, the base of the railroad. Are you gonna do the 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 sniper? Mini nuke strat? Yes, I am. Okay, so this is a crazy strat that saves a lot of time, like a lot, a lot of time that I'm not good at, uh, but Elon's good at. Um, you'll see what happens. You'll see. It's the coolest happens. strat in the run, in my opinion. <laughs> oh yeah, it is a really cool. I would, I would also give it that qualification. This is a great strat. Was this a Nikolai strat? Did he come up with this? Yes, this was found by the world record holder Nikolai. And I heard some yeah. people asking what the world record was in chat earlier. One twenty forty one by Nikolai. That's in game time though. Yep. Um, one hour twenty minutes and forty one seconds. All right. Let me see if I re can do this. So, that... so there's somebody that we gotta kill. But he's all the way over there, and we don't run, want to run all the way over there. So we're going to do Gotta that. Make a quick save. Did I? <laughs> yeah, yeah I made she did. I'm... Okay. Oh, the God, mini nuke just... shot can, can um, there's a visual cue for it, and if you, and it's sometimes you can miss it, even with the visual cue. Yeah, so oh, wow. it's... Yeah, he's a, the guy we need to kill is in, in an alleyway, so we're sending a nuke in, like, in all right, there, there, there you go. go. You can get nice. the visual, your reticle will show when you hit him. So, yep. um, we usually just run up to him and kill him, but that takes way long. It takes way too long. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to fast travel back to the campus law offices. Another, we got that fast travel point within like the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes of the game. And it saves us a bunch of time now by having it. And we're going to run in here to the ruins of CIT. Exactly where we <laughs> need to be. Should be able, have to pick up another mini nuke. Oh yeah, that another mini nuke that was staring us right in the face the whole time, and we had no idea. It's right there. there. We go. Those are the best, though. <laughs> yeah, it is funny how like it it comes like um, like you find one and then you find two and then it's like oh there's five more that we never looked at. <laughs> Yeah, the mini nuke saves so much time. I'm gonna see if I can try to preserve one for the end fight because it's really helpful to have one there. Yep. See, so he starts some dialogue and reminiscing about the old world, and then you just shoot him, and uh, it's fine. You just skip it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is brutal. Yeah, like, it I is got his arm. He just got shot on the, on, you know, yeah. on the like left arm, and it's just like on the other side holding on, you know. 
What's even funnier is it's like we failed at Bunker Hill. We didn't actually capture the synths. But yeah. we you know, we can actually just like get a promotion again too. These people yeah. don't seem to care that we fail at our task and yet we get the promotion. <laughs> yeah, it's also like it's not like we fail um by circumstances. We're deliberately doing the opposite thing they want us to do. And they're like, Yeah, you're you're doing great. Keep up the good work. <laughs> uh so Right here, we're gonna... how that worked in real oh. life. I did the uh, wait he... thing again. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to wait, but he hit W instead of T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, yep, so Father shows some dialogue. We're gonna fast travel back to Museum of Freedom and pick up the power armor. Um, this strat is no longer used in Glitchless, but I still use this strat, and Elon's gonna use the strat now because it makes... It's another... It's one of those highly... Oh, please tell me the game did not crash. I, yeah, the game oh, crashed. No. Oh no! But that's okay. You just did a quick load. Oh, you okay. just did um, you just uh, did a save because you um, fast travel, <laughs> so it saved. Yeah. So forgot to mention that that can happen. Let me make sure I share this with yeah, you. Yeah. Sometimes the game crashes. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah. It's okay though. <laughs> we do have. There's an option to save on uh, auto saves on fast travel. So oh, that's my quick save is here. That's okay. Yep. You're streaming on Discord at 1440p, by the way. Oh, oops. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Fancy Nitro user. Look at that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, oh, so this, we'll do this little bit again where we have to wait um, for Father. That's okay. <laughs> And this is all, yeah, someone said in chat, this is why we use in-game time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I should mention, too, that we were playing on the release patch, which is the really broken patch that everyone used for the vendor glitch and had so many other glitches, specifically for one pickpocket in this game. So we are prone to more crashes than the m most recent version as well. So it's not a surprise that I got a, gra a crash. Half yep. the battle and sometimes with these runs is just to re hope that you don't get a crash. Yep, yeah. yeah, definitely. Also, I gotta say, the whole... The, the load times are significantly minimized. Significantly. If we were on current patch, we would be here for another 30 minutes to an hour waiting for loading screens. Also, good on good on your character for being at a meeting early. Just imagine everyone's just, yep. everyone's just yep. sitting down there and they're just waiting one hour before the boss comes in and has the meeting. We're all just like, yeah, we're just going to sit here and chill. Yep. I'm not going to say why we're grabbing the power armor, but we're grabbing the power armor for a very cool thing. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens in the armor. You know, the sprint speed in armor is faster than the sprint speed without it. Mm -hmm. huh. you, do save, you do save a little time. That's also in that spreadsheet about endurance and all that. Mm -hmm. It's all about sprint speeds. There's been a bunch of tests. No, don't shoot. <laughs> don't shoot. No, the dialogue no. is short. Don't shoot. <laughs> You've so now, so now, Father has given us uh, control over the Institute. Um, it is. We are now the leader of the Institute. Um, we're going to talk to Ali Fillmore here, who happens to be on the stairs, which is a good spawn for her. We have to talk to her to start the quest Mass Fusion, where we're going to steal a power source that will power our nuclear reactor um, inside of the Institute and give us infinite power, basically. Oh, I forgot to call the elevator early on. That's yeah. a min minor strat. Yeah, minor strat. It, once you fa you're always fast traveling in and out of the Institute, so you can always make sure when you fast travel in to just call the elevator mm -hmm. so it's always there for you. Because you do need to ride the elevator. You didn't hit the button. Oh, I always forget. <laughs> there, you, there you go. There you go, Elon. Sorry. <laughs> My brain's kind of fried after, at this point. I'm just trying to, like, oof, get it through it. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. There we yeah, go. we are a Nepo baby. I never even realized that. We are a nepotism baby in this game. <laughs> wait, no, wait, 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 wait. We're the wait. father. We're the father of Sean. Wait a minute. <laughs> that is the opposite, actually. <laughs> I just Sean think it's hilarious that man. father could have chose, like, anyone in the Institute 
to take over the position that was better, but he was like, I want to give my son a chance. Yeah. In this run, it pays it pays off. Yeah. To do yeah. I wanna give my but, son who's named my dad. <laughs> my, you know. Yeah. So we're using this teleporter of uh, the one that we came in on, we're using this to teleport to Mass Fusion. Um I can't even remember what Mass Fusion is, but they have a very powerful um device <laughs> in the basement <laughs> that powers Mass Fusion, and we're gonna steal that device so we can use it in the institute. It's a nuclear um testing uh, facility if i recall correctly uh, from yep. like pre-war yep so we're going to grab a two bits of here we're going to grab a, an id card and a password so we can get into the basement and then this is why we have the power armor instead of riding the elevator down we're just jumping off the building there's a long oh elevator God. ride and battle <laughs> and you can skip that whole thing by just jumping off the building um, yep earlier in the run we jumped into the load zone of good neighbor um, to get into Good Neighbor. The new strat is you don't take the power armor and you just jump off the roof into the load zone of Good Neighbor. Um, I don't know why. I really don't know why, but whenever I play a game or do anything like that, and you, you jump off a building and you're going down like that, it still freaks me out. I know it's a game. I know it's like, you know, nothing to do, but it just freaks me out. Like, everything just mm, irks me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, definitely. You ever get that definitely. feeling? Like, am I, am, I, am I the only one that feels that way? Oh, yeah. Grand Theft Auto is a great game where it's just like, oh, this doesn't feel right. It feels too real. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there we go. But yeah. So, in the, after this little chamber right here, it's full of radiation. And um, oh, uh, the hazmat suit is a good strat to block it. Uh, if you have... <laughs> Three or four radaxes, you can just you can spam mm -hmm. up to five radax to increase your resistance. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have that many radax, you can just grab the uh, the suit and you're totally mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, I should say that the hazmat suit is entirely unnecessary, but it is a safety strat. And I'm again, I'm er erring on the side of caution with this run. Yeah. Normally, I would not go for it if I were going for personal best attempts, since my personal best like does all the optimal strategies. I'm gonna do this, green shirt and combat boots. So this is the fun part of the run. We used to hack a robot in this run, um, but now we're just gonna, we're gonna shoot some things. You'll see how much fun it is to shoot these things. Also mines, we used to use mines in this segment a long time ago. Okay, so there's a big old robot, sentry bot. You, you hit him with a nuke. Yep. Also we're on the, oh. because we're on this early patch, um, if you switch, your weapons, it reloads them, which isn't the case on current patch. Um, like that, he didn't have to go through a long animation to reload his mini nuke. Um, it just happened instantly because we switched weapons. There's two more, uh, two assault trons we kill with <laughs> right between the legs on the, on the missile. Um, that's that's okay. fascinating. That's fascinating, honestly. I don't know how that um, went through, but it did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she just appeared. Oh, what? Nice. what? Yeah, like, Ali, Ali will do that. Ali will do that. You have to just randomly show up. <laughs> you can't quick save and load to stop the fall velocity in Fallout 4. Somebody said that in chat. Fallout 4 does not work in the same way. Also, that would be a, a glitch. I would consider that a glitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is the glitchless run for any reminders. Yeah. And now we're just going to fast travel back to the Institute. We got the big piece of equipment that we needed. Small piece of equipment. Um, we killed all the robots. We're alive. So now we're going back to the Institute. I still can't believe that missile went directly through his leg. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I saw it and I was like, are you... Uh, I can't be serious what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, that's a great hitbox. That is a Ooh. that is a marvel of modern Ooh. technology. There we this go. game yeah. this game did come out eight years ago. Um, a tough reminder. This, yeah. Honestly, I think the gameplay holds up a little bit. I think it still holds up. I think it's a fun shooter. Um, I love this game. Uh, we got to talk to Ali Fillmore again. You can shoot her, I think. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm afraid that I'm a killer can... because these institute <laughs> personnel have really low health. And yep. so, if you're not careful, you can accidentally kill them with, like, low health. <laughs> and if you do true. that, then oh, you're God. losing a lot more time because everyone's mad at you. They're like, you just killed an Institute personnel. Yeah, you lose it <laughs> yeah. instantly. Yeah. They all become aggro. Yeah. 
It's like, you shoot us, that's okay. You kill um, us, if you kill us, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Talk to Ali, we talked to Father again. Again. He's going to send us on another quest. Which, is this uh, the Grey Garden quest? Uh -huh. yes. mm -hmm. Yep, we're going to go so, steal the scientist. Huh. Yep, so we're going to go steal the scientist. Uh, there's a scientist out in the wasteland who we want to be on our team. So we're going to convince him to come with us. Uh, we're traveling faster than back to Grey Garden. Again, another fast food point we got at the very beginning of the run. I'm always coming back to these places. Oh, are you going to give me my weapons game? Uh, oh, no. yeah, this, uh, this happens uh -oh. sometimes. Are you uh -oh. quick save? Uh, there you oh. go. Yep. Okay. Sometimes we have to kill these aggressors. Um, yeah. There's st <laughs> sometimes stuff like that happens. The game's like, you're going too fast, and we're just going to not I work with you. I love how the game loaded with the gun, but it, there was no gun there. I was expecting the game to glitch, you know, like glitch out to where it would work, but the gun just didn't load. Yep. Yep. Uh we got to talk to Enrico from the Institute, um, and he's going to tell us, hey, this is, this is a scientist. He's locked in the door, though. you got to convince him to come with us. Isn't it faster to fail all the speech checks? Yes, it is. Okay. So you do have... Oh, I guess, yeah. Usually, uh, in the old runs, we would have four charisma to do bartering, but then it found out we don't need charisma, so we can fail these speech checks easier. And there's two opportunities to fail as well, which is good. All right, we threaten him. There you go. Now you can leave. You can just walk out. Because yeah. if you did successfully do it, you couldn't just walk out or the game would soft lock. Mm -hmm. I love old patches. Some... I'm just picking up some extra ammo because I'm a little bit low on yep. ammo. Yep. That's that quest. And now we have to do a speech for the Commonwealth. Oh, yes, yeah, so we get to record some dialogue that will play on Diamond City Radio. He's already down there. <laughs> oh, he was down yeah. there. Sometimes oh. he's not down there. C'est vraiment gratifiant de pouvoir aider l'Institut. Sean. Huh. I like he uh, exited his dialogue by walking away, which I think is fun, uh, kind of oh, funny. Did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's why. Sometimes if you sprint, he, yeah. Right. He's tired of you shooting him. Yep. Sometimes if you sprint towards an NPC, they'll instinctively try to get out of your way. <laughs> um, and if you have to talk to them, it'll mess up the dialogue. <laughs> also, pay attention to this dialogue I'm going to do here. <laughs> oh, you do the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> and either you gotta talk to Father. Yep. Got it. You Where got it. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, I love this game. <laughs> and he's like, "That was interesting." He's <laughs> like, "We were like, yeah, we're your yeah, new yeah. masters." <laughs> We're getting very close to the, uh, the end of the run, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little time. I want, just want to thank the Fallout 4 community. I want to thank Tomato Angus and It's Jabo and Kung Cobra, Jinjenia, Nikolai, Jam and Rock, Oz DF, Milky Way Squid. There's probably some people I'm forgetting, but over the last six years of this right, category okay, evolving <laughs> all of these people have come out from the I'm fallout community <laughs> yeah that's a strat where I you can it. jump <laughs> you can jump on the you roof you can jump over you end up right here <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work it's annoying when it doesn't work yeah all those people um came together and made a very cool run out of this run which was considered not very cool uh six years ago so there you go elon of course elon also a world record holder in this game and this run um we don't got to talk to Travis. You're fine. I always forget that. <laughs> Is there anybody I'm forgetting? Oh, um, Bill Chamber again. Another mm -hmm. person who can. Uh, I'm looking through our glitch list Discord just to make sure there's nobody I've forgotten because everybody uh, nuclear, um, who's also um, a, a Skyrim speedrunner, right? Yep. Yep. All these Skyrim people. Skyrim glitch list speedrunner. Yeah. Without any of these people, without any one of us working on this run, this run would not be where it is today. And those guys, um, they really deserve 
all the credit for this. They did, they've done a wonderful job over the last six years. And if anyone wanted to like come in and like was watching, it's like, oh, I could probably do a Fallout one. That'd be really fun. Where could they go to find out more information mm -hmm. and uh, information on who to contact about to learn more about runs? I would say speedrun.com, the Fallout category on speedrun.com. We have a we have a Discord. We have every single Fallout game in there. Everybody is very welcoming. We love having new people in there. We love teaching people about the runs. Every, everyone is super helpful and super nice. And just come join us. Come run Fallout 4 with us. Fallout 3, Fallout 2, anything. Any Fallout game has a speedrun. Even Fallout 76. If you like Fallout 76, you can run it with all your friends. <laughs> yeah, we punch him, we shoot him, we kick him. Gotta check this chem container for medics. Nice. Yeah. I guess also while we have a second, uh, if anyone wanted to follow any one of y'all, where would they head off to? Oh, so for me, uh, twitch.tv forward slash elongated musket gun. That's where you'd be able to find my my uh, Twitch page. Also, elongated musket gun on YouTube. More recently, I've been posting YouTube stuff, so better bet to find me there. Yep, and I'm but, Snow Cone yeah. Joey everywhere, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Twitch. I route mm -hmm. and I run a lot of um, different kinds of glitchless runs in this game. Stuff that, you know, other people don't want to do or stuff that can't be on leaderboards. So if you want to come see all that, come on in, you know? What are we doing now? You put the thing in the reactor, right? You power the Director reactor. Meeting. Yeah, oh yeah, you punched mm -hmm. your dad a bunch. Um, this is a strat. We're going to switch to the dialogue camera here because it's faster than the normal camera. Now mm -hmm. we are the head of the Institute. We are having our first meeting um, on the next steps to uh, solving the Brotherhood of Steel problem. <laughs> what, what? The dialogue dropped. Oh, that happens. There you go, you're back in. <laughs> oh, wait, you I'm stood up again. You're going to have to sit down and wait for yeah. father again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Just some minor technical difficulties with this run. Ah, vous voilà. Vous avez parlé aux membres du conseil. Mm. C'est la seule façon d'assurer la sécurité de la... Heureux. Vous... C'était dur. Talk to our, our father son again. Il y a évidemment une dernière menace. He's talking to us about the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, so there's the thing. The end of the line quest is the quest that father gives you to destroy the railroad. But if you have already destroyed the railroad, in that same dialogue where he gives you the quest, the quest completes automatically. Mm -hmm. That'll also happen... Uh, this is a little side bit. If you run, um, if you use the uh, the railroad to kill the Brotherhood of Steel, and then you kill the railroad, you in the game completes the next time you talk to Father, because all prerequisites for the uh, Institute ending have been met. So Bethesda did do a lot of thinking when it comes to stuff like that, and I will give them props for that. Mm -hmm. So he tells us to destroy the Brotherhood and to talk to Dr. Lee and her assistant. Mm -hmm. um, or not her assistant, just another doctor. Um, and they're going to tell us how we're going to destroy the Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Hey, why is she bleeding? I'm not sure. I shot her. Yeah. <laughs> The grenade. Oh, <laughs> thanks, grenades. <laughs> they're, they're good grenades, though. They will help. They, the grenades that they give us spawn more synths to fight the brother, which is fun. <laughs> the dialogue lockup? Yep. <laughs> That's so good. I love that so much. Très bien. So now we're gonna make sure we have everything bound, everything that we need, everything uh, where the grenades that we need. Oh, they don't come until later. They don't come until oh, okay. fast. I have them. Yep. You got all your drugs bound and everything. Mm. <laughs> all right. So we're fast traveling to the Boston airport. We got that um, fast forward point earlier in the run. And now this is the final battle. We're gonna take down the Brotherhood of Steel. 
using sprint, a, sprint, very, sprint. a very familiar friend, uh, Liberty Prime. So we didn't here, get to see him in Fallout Three, but you know. Yep. Yeah. So Works they don't expect you to. Yeah, they don't expect you to be in this part of the terminal yet, and we're on an old patch. So these generators didn't spawn in immediately. Um, you didn't blow up that generator. Um, he's going to use a missile. There's a generator in that tower, and he's going to use that missile to hit the backside of the tower and destroy the generator, which is a very cool strat. As you can see, that uh, it worked because it's counting off the three generators. We just blow up those generators. Um, we don't have any missiles for Proctor Ingram, a, a Brotherhood of Steel member, so we'll just have to kill them normally with our gun. Um, and all these guys carry laser rifles, so it's easy to... Uh, um, get more ammo. The Institute Beacons are going to send uh, more synths our way. Just to help us fight a little bit. And, yep, there's Ingram. He's a cool character, honestly. Uh, if you ever play this game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <spin back. laughs> so you're not getting her uh, ammo. Yep. Alright, now we need to protect oh, this guy. The synth, oh, no. the synth virus. So our, our synth virus is going to be hacking Liberty Prime yeah. here. <laughs> And uh, he got his arm blown Wait. off before his animation started. <laughs> so <laughs> his arm is just kind of floating there. Um, our goal is to keep him alive because if uh, um, the, the waves start 25%, it'll tell us every 25% on how long uh, it takes him to hack. And if um, he dies, he'll respawn, but it takes... Um, it, it restarts the progress that he's on. So if he's one-fourth of the way and he's starting on the second part and he dies, it'll go back to one-fourth of the way. Look at the art that's just there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the vertebrate's going to come out now. I'm going to shoot the driver of him so that it can crash because it has Elder Maxon on it. On no, him. that's the second vertebrate. Oh, it is the second vertebrae, you're right. Yes, if you shot this one and it exploded in front of you, it would kill the synth mm -hmm. virus. Ultimately, I don't want Elder Maxon to get near me because he's bad news for her, not only me, but the synth. Yeah. Like, he can instantly kill me and the synth, even on very easy. I would, I would, I wouldn't kill him, just in case. Oh, it will. Oh, oh and so it got shot down by someone else that isn't us, so it's crashing. Oh, and no. He died. The this synth died 75% oh, away through. Oh, 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 so no. he goes back to three-fourths of the way done. Um, he's going to he's going to teleport in and respawn, see? And sometimes um, NPCs can get in his way. I would just get out of his way. I would, yeah, kill that guy. I would kill our friend there because he is blocking the virus. Um, he is... See, now we're blocking the virus. The pathing is odd. You gotta stop walking in front of it, Elon. Please stop walking in front of him. <laughs> I'm looking out for Elder Maxon. <laughs> yeah, and that's the second vertebrae. The second vertebrae. <laughs> yeah, right, any more Brotherhood is. Oh, you yeah. don't want you here. Do you have a nuke? Do you have an extra nuke? No, I have no nukes. Oops. Oh, no, Elon. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's so easy to fall off this platform. I don't know how to like explain it other than you can easily fall off this platform. <laughs> yep. We just have to protect the sim. Oh, here we go. We're done with this. I thought there were I thought there uh, were no, two we're and two we're gonna start working yep. on it together. <laughs> yep. So we're done with uh, the synth hacking uh, Liberty Prime. You don't actually don't have to go anywhere. That's the new strat. Is that it doesn't matter how close you are or how far away you are. You can be standing right next to Liberty Prime, and it'll teleport you away the same amount of time. Yeah, I just don't want to get hit by any Brotherhood of Steel members. <laughs> that is also a yeah a great idea. Is it just get as far away from possible as anybody who could kill you? This guy's gonna show up and be like, "It's time to go." <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Timings ends when our HUD disappears. So I'm gonna fast travel to the Institute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And after fast traveling to the Institute, I'm gonna sh shoot Father and our, our timing ends when the HUD disappears. Wow, what a spoiler. You just spoiled the whole game for me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, after the destruction of the Brotherhood of Steel, by their own device, Liberty Prime. Elon's gonna fast travel back to the Institute. And this is the end game. Father gives you like a whole speech. Father's on his deathbed. He's dying of cancer. 
He revealed that to us earlier. And oh, okay. instead of doing his whole dialogue, which wastes time, you can just kill him and the game ends. There you go, he's dead. All and right, then and time, that's it. time. All right. Well, thank you all so much <laughs> for showcasing that great run. <laughs> it was a great thank ending. You. Uh, thank you. Do not forget all of for all for all of us in there, uh, we will be heading on over to the uh, finale of Tiny Tree Fort here in a little bit. This is a great time to get up, stretch, get some water while we go ahead and get everything taken care of for Tiny Tree Fort. We'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Till then, have a wonderful, wonderful couple of days. This Peace out. Wasn't the world I Peace out. Thank you for watching the run. It was the one I found myself in.